cravings. One of the most challenging things to deal with when you're trying to get leaner. Everybody hates cravings. Well, here's something you can do to help alleviate them or at least blunt them. And this is proven by study. It sounds weird, but it's true. Take a high quality probiotic. No joke. The microbes in your gut actually drive some of your cravings and healthy probiotics tend to reduce cravings for things like sugar and fast food and chemicals that produce those kind of short-term highs. So probiotics, it's one of your tools in the fight against cravings. Get some better bacteria. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, uh, have, I mean, you're the most consistent with taking seed. Is that something that you notice as like a side effect? You know, I'm so disciplined. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> I don't even know what a craving. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Wow. You know what I uh, noticed with with, uh, with Have you ever noticed that? I, I, that's not like something that I've ever paid attention to. Although I've, I've just being, you know, completely transparent. I've never been very consistent with taking my probiotic like over that it curbs your uh cravings yeah yeah i'm like that that's enough to motivate me though to test that to see because i do have like sugar cravings and that's mm -hmm. something that i've always had to work on and, and yeah it's it, interesting I, I don't know if i paid attention to that but uh i'm sure it, it plays a factor in there probiotics are weird they do lead to that right? the studies on them are weird because uh you know 20 years ago you would have never guessed that they would be connected to all these different things there's studies that show that probiotic administration reduces anxiety, depression, that it helps with mm -hmm. fat loss, it helps with muscle growth, cognitive performance, sleep, skin, uh, uh, moods, and uh, behaviors, right. um, and including cravings. So, I mean, this is why it's called the second brain, right? That, yeah, you know why the, they call the it that? Brain uh, well, connection. You, yeah. you guys know that why they call it that. The So what's interesting is, uh, obviously, the brain has the most... Uh, serotonin receptors in the body. So receptors where serotonin attaches to. The second highest concentration of serotonin receptors is in the gut. And the gut actually produces heart, right? yeah. a majority of serotonin. The heart is the third. How yeah. weird is that? I know. And this we, is what the <laughs> old wisdom, right? That's what trips that. me out. What trips me out is nobody knew this thousands of years ago, but yet they referred to knowing things in the mind, in the heart, right, in right. the gut. I feel it in my gut. My mm -hmm. heart tells me to. Yeah, my Isn't heart's leading me there. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so crazy how we totally ignore intuition now, even though um there was there's some truth there. But anyway, yeah, probiotics uh, can definitely help influence you in the positive. At the very least, if your gut health is not so great, um, you're you're just not gonna feel as good. And this has been proven in studies many, many times that we tend to reach for foods that produce the kind of the short term, I don't know, good feeling. So mm -hmm. These are usually foods that are hyper palatable because um, it's not a long term feeling you get from eating super healthy. Excuse me, short term feeling from eating super healthy. It's more of a long term. The short term comes from like eating hyper palatable. While right? you're eating candy, you feel good in the moment. And when you feel kind of crappy, those are the foods you tend to, um, you know, go towards. And uh, so probiotics for sure improve gut health. Now, seed, obviously, the company we work with. By far the best one I've ever used. Oh, Hands yeah. down, not even close. All the feedback is the same. I always get that. From not people. even close. There isn't one that I ever used. That, even with the good probiotics I used in the past, after a while I'd have to switch out or go off or do something different. Seed has been consistent every single night. Well, get ever ready. You're going to be talking about them more. They actually, they're up for new renewal, and they, I think they want to pick up their cadence because of how much great feedback they've gotten from our audience. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and I know that we're one of their best partners, and I know they're coming up or for resign. and I know if Katrina told me that they want to pick up the cadence because, and they're already, I think, a two-time-a-month uh, sponsor already. Wow. Did you know probiotics also help uh, prevent UTIs and stuff like that for women? Do you guys know mm. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Natural way to help prevent because the microbiome, obviously there's a microbiome. Yeah, when it's out of balance is when that really Correct. occurs, right? Correct. Yeah. And good bacteria, um, think of them as soldiers that prevent bad bacteria from taking over or help promoting balance. So when you get an infection like that, it's uh, the imbalance of bad to good bacteria. I keep tripping it. out on like um, how much, well, obviously like bacteria, you can kind of um, see how much it affects your behaviors and like... Uh, the way that you think and operate uh, and also like the inflammation, the excess inflammation factor in the brain. Yes. And so it's like if between those two factors alone, I mean, obviously we talk all about the exterior things like exercise yeah. and like sleep and all, but what's going on inside your body in terms of like addressing those two things would be huge. They now have connections to the gut microbiome and multiple sclerosis, neurodegenerative diseases, autism. There's a distinct 
connection. They don't know exactly what's going on or how that you know how they could use that. But um, it's it's way more than we think. What's crazy when we were kids, they were they weren't really aware of this so much. They used to prescribe antibiotics to us like yeah. it was candy. It was candy yeah. I remember I'd go in. It hasn't there. even been that long actually since they've like got away from that, dude. Yeah, now now that the pediatrician now is a little bit more like, let's wait this out and see what happens. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I just had to walk in. Doctors, here's your, here you go, yeah. take this and you're done. You get the sniffles, here you go. I used to take antibiotics all the time. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. Here's how you can win it. Uh, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it here. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale on some workout programs. Our beginner strength training program, MAP Starter, is 50% off. And then we have a bundle that includes MAPS Anabolica MAPS Prime that's called the Starter Bundle. That's also 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. You guys said something that made me think about, do you think we have traded the wisdom of uh, behavior and psychology for science? Totally. Like, do you think we were totally. actually smarter you know, hundreds of years ago around uh, psychology and behavior and we've traded that out because we're so much smarter in science. We, we traded information and knowledge for uh, uh, and wisdom. We've traded the two. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot more wisdom in the past uh, and, and more trust in our own intuition. Yeah. Uh, today we have more knowledge of things. I think the combination of the two is always where you're going to find the best. Right? Yeah, no, I agree. Mm -hmm. I think that we all agree on that, that I think that instead of like, you know, it's not an either or. It's like it's like comparing the the deadlift and the squat or like certain exercises. Yeah. It's like why why would you limit to just one? <laughs> but to your point, like I think we did throw the baby out of the bathwater, right? So we did sort of like abandon a lot of our Agreed. intuition and yeah, listening to some of that old wisdom of like, uh, you know, to to really in, be in tune with those signals of your body. Yeah, and it's uh, you know, again, we're so arrogant, right? We look at our technology now. All we've did, by the way, all we did to bring us where we are today is we discovered a tool and humans are, I mean, this is what we're known for. Um, this is what really separates us, right? From animals is we're exceptional tool makers, like exceptional. Okay. And we figured out a tool essentially, which is science, the scientific method, which is extremely valuable. It's allowed us to uh, invent and innovate at rates that are just incredible. Obviously the way we live today versus just 200 years ago like profound um, differences. But so, so that makes us look back in time and think that people who existed, you know, 500 years ago, thousand years ago, 2000, 5,000 years ago, were, were just stupid. But the truth is they didn't have the same knowledge and understanding necessarily of, let's say uh, of the material world or how things work from that, from the scientific standpoint, but they observed things and commented and mm -hmm. recorded on them for thousands of years, mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of years talking about human nature, human behavior. This is why, for example, the seven deadly sins yeah. are just as relevant today as they were 2000 years ago, even though well, the world's vastly different. I think we discredit a lot of, you know, the ability that a lot of the ancients and all that had to master their crafts in certain directions because they were so focused, hyper-focused, and they could get like masses of people all on board on the same exact focus to accomplish, you know, uh, a goal together versus now we're just so fragmented and, mm. and we think we're, we know everything. So along the lines of the seven deadly sins, it kind of falls in the spiritual wisdom, um, realm. And I was going through our questions on our main IG and one of the most popular or most liked questions that we didn't answer. We probably wouldn't answer. Typically we look for uh, the most popular health and fitness questions that are asked. That's how we determine like what we're going to answer for the quaz. Uh, but somebody asked a personal question and I thought, you know, okay, this is not maybe a, a qua type of uh, question, but uh, curious. And I'm curious myself um, for somebody who was such a staunch atheist for so long, how, how did you move from that to, to believing in something that you believe so strongly to not be true? That was oh, a question asked. And a lot of people, wanted to hear how you responded to oh, that. Oh, wow. Really? So that was popular yeah. question. Well, yeah. okay. Um, so I think if you're, because I was a I was a legit atheist. And what I mean by that is um, I thought about it. Like a well-read one. Like I thought about it, Yeah. right? Because a lot of people- You've said something before, so I decided to cut you yeah. off, but I, that I, it was actually like it never really dawned on me 
that it, the truth behind this is that a lot of atheists are uh, more well read around spirituality and religion Correct. sometimes because yeah. so, they're trying to dismantle yes the, because they are they're searching the for all the holes and so there's a lot of times uh they know more than the person who's trying to defend it listen i'll make this argument that uh like true atheism meaning that the the curiosity to study and learn and um you know discover the nature of the world and break things down like so, like you're really interested because there's people who just don't think about it that's different people don't think about it that person is, you know, they're just kind of, I guess, floating in in whatever, right? They're just, they're not really anywhere. They're I feel really like you fall it. more agnostic when you're like that. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. you say that? Yeah. Like, like just, I think like a true atheist to it. your point is like, you're in search to prove it wrong. Yeah, you're searching mm -hmm. yeah. is what it is. I yeah. think an atheist is closer to uh, becoming a believer right. than the typical person who doesn't think about anything because uh, that's my experience. So I was searching. I was constantly trying to search and learn because just because you know, I, okay, fine. I'm an atheist. I don't think God exists. Well, I still am curious on the nature of things and what's going on. So I, I, I was always searching. I was always looking meaning. I, and that also kind of made me open. Um, so that's, that's, that was the starting point. I moved away from that when the more that I searched, the more mysterious things seemed to be. And then I remember I had and a conversation. what do you mean by that? Are you talking about like things like quantum physics or just kind like, of, or like as the deeper you went, you realized like, oh, we actually don't have a definitive answer for this or for kind that. of. I had a conversation with a, a friend of mine, and he said, "Well, don't you feel like you're?" Because I said something like, "Oh, religious people are so arrogant." And he said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, you know, they're sitting there telling me they know that God exists and that He's real." I said, "Well, aren't you kind of the same thing?" I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "You're telling me you know for sure." that God doesn't exist. I'm like, well, the burden of proof is on the person claiming. He goes, okay, but still, don't you feel like you might be a little nice? And I remember I thought about that a lot. I was like, oh shit, like, I, I don't know everything. And I guess I am. That doesn't mean I think there is a God, but I guess I am being a little arrogant. So it kind of moved me away from like this definitive, like for sure there's nothing to like, well, I don't know Yeah. type of deal. And then uh, the next thing that kind of opened my, um, I guess my mind to a little bit was the wisdom that was in um, spiritual practices. And the, the first thing that ha had, so the, the first thing that had me peer into that was I, this is when I was, I learned about uh, fasting and its potential behavioral benefits. Because back then for the listeners, I mean, you know, we've all been in fitness for two and a half decades. Fasting or going without food for more than two or three hours a bit no-no in our, in our space years ago. It's like, oh, you can't do that. You're gonna lose muscle, whatever. It's all bullshit, but this is what we thought. And I remembered looking into fasting and its potential behavioral benefits, trying it and, re and realizing those benefits for someone like me who was so tied to food every two or three hours. And then I read about fasting. I'm like, oh my God, this is a practice that's been done in like pretty much every spiritual practice. And the reason why they practice it is for the behavioral benefits that I noticed. I'm like, I wonder what else is in these spiritual practice. I mean, they lasted for thousands of years. It's, they passed the evolution of ideas, meaning uh, you know, an idea has to, la if it lasts for thousands of years, it's because it stands the test of time. Otherwise it ain't going to last. Eventually it's going to, right. not going to work. So I said, I wonder what other wisdoms are in there. And so then I kind of opened my mind a little bit to just the wisdom aspect of it. Like, okay, these existed for thousands of years. There's got to be some, some spiritual truth or some wisdom. So I kind of opened up a little more. Then we met Bishop Barron and his team. And I felt, and this is just the best I could describe. I just felt moved and kind of connected. And I remember I call, I, I uh, contacted Arthur Brooks at the time. And I said, this is kind of weird, but I'm having a tough time making the leap. And he goes, well, that's where the faith comes in. At some point you have to like, you have to decide like yeah, whether you have faith or not. In. Yeah. And I said, I feel really pulled to it. And he goes, well, once, once he's after you, he's after you. And I, like all kinds of weird stuff kept, kept happening. And um, I mean, I, I just, I took the leap. And then uh, from there, more things opened up and I felt, a different sense of calm. And, but and that, that leap, that leap is always a leap. You're, yeah. You know, there's always going to be a leap. And I recommend to atheists if, or, or whatever, if you're curious, C.S. Lewis has mere Christianity. Christianity is a phenomenal book. Mm -hmm. He's very analytical and he speaks to the to intellect. So if that's the kind of thinker you are, it's a, it'll, it'll, at the very least, it'll get you thinking. Yeah. It's a really, really good uh, read. So. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's, it's interesting. I always like love hearing how people kind of, try to make sense and figure out like the bigger questions and, and, and seek that out, you know, cause I came from like the opposite experience of mm -hmm. that, which, which was more like, I never lost my faith, but at the same time was like, 
getting tested all the time by atheists. Mm -hmm. And then like, I was trying to like, see if I could arm myself with better material and like ask deeper questions and philosophical questions. And I was, just wasn't getting that from my uh, preachers and from, um, you know, church in, in itself. And so I had to go a little bit further and get a little more academic uh, with, with some of that materials and stuff and came across science of God, which was a, you know, a pretty decent book in terms of like trying to, come up with some answers to some of these hard questions in terms of like, if, if you were to put some kind of science behind like a universal clock, like they, they, they made some, some bits of references of how to explain it. it wasn't perfect. And like, I'm, but it still like gets you in that thought process yeah. of like, we don't really know everything scientifically. We have some good thoughts. Um, but, uh, you know, there's just so much there that is um it's pretty much impossible you do have to take a leap yeah and i think it's uh a huge disservice uh to us as humans to deduce everything down to um scientific explanations and chemicals like uh you, you'll find people who are like, maybe non-believers or whatever and then they'll have an experience like a near-death experience or their child is born or they fall in love and all of a sudden they open up to the possibility that they're maybe a God. And then you got people on the other end who are like, oh, that's just serotonin and dopamine and chemicals. And like, I think that that is uh, really, really, uh, it's doing us a disservice to, to boil everything down to like, oh, it's chemicals. It's a trick. It's an illusion type of deal. I mean, I don't know. You know, you might think I'm wrong, but uh, believing that, um, you know, loving your child is a bunch of just chemical tricks in your brain. Doesn't that kind of like, I mean, aren't you taking the experience and uh, really, you know, kind of bringing it down to something that it's not. I mean, how can you say that, right? When you experience that, like, it, it, does that really explain it? I don't yeah. think so. So I don't know. So it's interesting, but I, I do love, I do love the discussions. And in, in my opinion, atheists are open for discussion. They want to yeah. talk about this kind of stuff. Yeah. That's why I used to love those series with uh, Sam Harris, Jordan Peterson, yeah. and then they would really just try to like hash it out. I'm like, I just wish more people would. <laughs> Obviously, we're so busy and consumed with our day to day, you know, survival and, and bills and all these kinds of things. It's like, you know, philosophy is a lost thing. Like we used to sit and just ponder. Uh, and ask bigger questions. It's always fun for me if people actually like take the time to do that. Yeah. And look at the world, man. We got more shit than ever. We've got more food and shelter and whatever. And people are like, they're more anxious and not happy. I mean, there's, there's other answers out there. I don't think it's more stuff. I, I don't think it's like yeah. buying more shit or more drugs. Uh, you know, we've kind of hit that, uh, that, uh, tipping point. I think like, we've got all the stuff and we we're got really, all the knowledge. We're there. really close, man. We really are. Yeah. I mean, I, I think in our lifetime, we'll see everybody will be able to pretty much have what they want, you know? Yeah. Far, like they're going to be hooked up to as materialistic things, right? right? Yeah. Whether that's in a, a, a virtual world that feels real or actually be able to 3d print it. I don't know exactly what that will look like, but I don't think we're far off from, getting everything you could imagine. I mean, I bet you if you would ask somebody 300 years ago uh, the, to look at somebody's life who's poor, right? Or like in, you know, lower yeah. middle class, all the things they had, is that more than they could either, could even have fathomed back then, yeah. you know, of things like they have all the things and some. So yeah, I don't think we're far I remember my dad, um, my dad would have these conversations with me a lot because he he was poor in Sicily, really poor, right? Yeah, well, I never asked you, where, do, where does your family fall on, on that? Like your parents, are they? Are Catholic. They, so are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we were like- But you guys didn't have- you guys Nah, didn't we were holiday churchgoers, like Easter and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Right, right. We didn't go every Sunday. Um, I would say, if you ask them, they'll say that they, you know, that they're religious and they yeah. believe and they pray. But it wasn't like a big thing um, in my household growing up. It wasn't up. talked about or practiced or no, anything? No, maybe more so, definitely more so my mom. My grandma, very devout. Very, like, she'll do the rosary. Yeah. You know, if like you're having a baby, she'll do the rosary while you're in labor and- you know, yeah. if you're trying to get a job or something, she does that stuff. So it's it's kind of cool. But I remember my dad telling me, you know, because he grew up very poor. Um, and when I say poor, by, you know, different standards than we consider poor. Like people now are like, oh, you don't have, you know, a car. Like you know, he didn't have like a bathroom. Like they were really poor when he was real young. And um, he, he told me, he goes, you know, it's weird. He goes, I was happy though. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, we were all together. Yeah. And I was with my family. And, um, I don't remember people being too depressed or anxious. And he goes, and in here we got all these big houses and I got this house and, you know, I come home from work and you guys say hi to me. And then you go in your rooms. I don't see you guys anymore. He goes, well, I was a kid. We didn't have rooms. So we all had to stay together all the time on top of each other. 
but we were having, he used to explain this to me, like, you guys have all this stuff. And he goes, I didn't have anything. He'd tell me the toys he played with when he was a kid. I thought he was bullshitting me. <laughs> you know, he's like, I used, I got, the, he goes, I got a tire from the, from the garbage, from the dump once. And then that was my toy for like years, you know? I thought he was making it up. He's like, but it was so fun. He's like, you got all these video games, you guys are bored all the time, you know? So, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. It's interesting stuff. So, along those lines of, you know, uh, kind of along those lines, I think uh, I'm going to be, I know Justin, you had signed up to get a vasectomy at some point. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go, I got to go, I got to go sign up. I'm wow. just, be, yeah, because, you know, having kids. Okay, so the form. first step is making the appointment, right? Yeah. Uh, the second step is uh, confirming the appointment. The third step is actually showing up, which yeah. I didn't do. Yeah, so. <laughs> so I'm a little reluctant so did, did I ever tell, <laughs> yeah. did I tell you guys this? I, uh, I might not have told you guys this or not, but um, I remember reading this. This was years ago. Maybe it was the first time I ever heard Sal say he was going to do this. That made me think of this. Um, there's like a popular time to do that, that men do this. And it's during uh, the March Madness week. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's so it's like because like they're like gonna a, watch TV anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you're gonna be laid. You're gonna be laid up for several days anyways. Yeah, you get the ball so, donut. Yeah, you know, and so you and your go. boys go get your vasectomies together, and then you watch March Madness. So if I were to do it, that's how I would do it. Well, like, you definitely need a buddy. Yeah, like, you need somebody to do like be in the trenches with you. You know, because yeah. for that point, like you yeah. want to hang out because you're just gonna be the only. Your wife's not gonna care yeah. about your ball problems. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> Are you, what prevent you from going? Is it just the, like the, oh shit, they're going to cut open my, uh, you know, my shit? Unfortunately, I started to ask questions to some of my friends who had the procedure done and then they're all like kind of positive about it. But then they would mention their brother who had it, who uh, still got his wife pregnant. And then oh. uh, a, 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 somebody else they knew that actually like had to reverse it and like all these, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And what's the statistics on that? And then that sort of got me a little bit like, e -e, I'm going to look a little further into this. Yeah. Cause I'm like, if you're going to go through all that, you want to, to happen what you came in there to do. Yeah. Like, it's just like, the, but there's a potential that it's not going to work out. Yeah. yeah it's also what like, if, what if the world needs you? Like we have yeah, a what what if, population what if you're collapse? like Elon Musk and you have to yeah, like, what you know, if all of a sudden it's like, have for, that many kids, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need kids for Mars, you guys. So you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. <laughs> I, I just, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's such a vulnerable. It I know is. people are thinking I'm such a, you're such a pussy. But uh, I don't know. I mean, you're sitting no, there. No, I, I and you gotta. It's no. such an irrational I thought. Like that. I think I I'm gonna lose my manhood that. a little bit. You Katrina know? and I obviously have talked about it, right? When we decide that, like, we for sure don't want to have any more, and it's like done. And she's like, "Oh yeah, you'll just go do that." I'm like, "Uh, no." <laughs> so, <laughs> so I respond, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no. "No." She's like, "Why? It's not a big deal." It's like, "Okay, for you maybe." Yeah. It's like, it reminds me of the same thing when they told me to go do the whole jerking off in the bathroom. Like everyone just downplays it. Like it's yeah. no big deal. Oh, like, to get your sperm checked. That's a, to me, that is the, that is yeah. such a weird thing. And it's so funny how other people just knock like, are you almost done in there? Yeah. It's no, it's no big deal. <laughs> I know. Like, how do you do? So I get it. That's the thing. Like, how do you do that when everybody knows that's what you're doing? Yeah. Literally you go in the bathroom, you got nurses, your wife, doctors. Are waiting. You know, it turned into like a big old thing, right? Between Katrina and the, the doctors, they were all talking about my, like, she's like, Hey, my husband just doesn't really want to come in here and do this. And she's like, is there something wrong with the room? We just mm. remodeled it and did this. It's, like, <laughs> it's not the I, fucking room. Candles? Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, I don't, I don't need any more magazines and, and like, videos. Round and, up the entire staff and have them applause when I come out of the door. But the, and you know I what? It. it just highlights. So they're like, people think that we're like, men are just like these Animal. jerk off machines. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's like we're running around jerking off on everything all the just time. Just immediately, like, yeah, can just, just, just yeah, immediately just want to have sex, or have sex with everything, jerk off on everything. We're just so, a bunch of so why is it a big deal? Yeah. We throw you some nudie magazines and yeah. give you a dark room. You should be fine, yeah. right? It's like, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, Jesus. So yeah. I mean, buy me some dinner. I don't right. know. Maybe when I was seventeen, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Maybe when I like uh -huh. ever, like the wind blew and I got excited, you know what I'm saying? But it's a little right. different now. You know? I don't know. I so, feel like I'd have I'd be like I'd have to make a deal and be like, can I sneak in so nobody knows and I'll let you guys know when I'm done. Oh. Too much pressure. I told you what we ended up we ended up doing the second time was I I I did home and then drove it. You have to be within thirty minutes, uh -oh. so that's the that's part of why they want you to come in and do that. And I'm like, whatever, I'll drive then. Like, and even that was awkward. The fact that I'm on the clock. You know, like, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, go get the plastic. Like we're about to fool around, right? It's like, go get the plastic thing. It's like, okay, we got, we're, we live 15 minutes from the hospital. So it's like, it was like, dude, even that was like lame. At least it was with my wife at my house. So it was a little bit better. But it still is just not, it's, I don't know. Do you have to do it yourself or is your wife allowed to do it for you? No, me? you have to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself. You can't use any lotions or anything like that too. Like you can't, do, you know, you don't I want it to like get. You, yeah. I mean, why not include somebody? <laughs> they can't. Like she can't, do, she can't do anything orally to you. She can't do anything like that. So there's like rules and there's like, I got to do it. And so it's like, 
I don't know. It was lame. I was I was so think, clinical. I yeah. always think of like a like a skit where like you're walking in, you know, and you drop it. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just just kill me. Just have you guys me. seen? Have you guys ever seen any of these rooms? You guys have never experienced. No one here has experienced. No, any of my this? yeah, no. I, I just envision almost like one of those like weird like you know how in New York they used to have these like uh, like, like brothels slots where like oh you, you pay like money and then all of a sudden it open up and be somebody like stripping for you. Oh whatever. yeah, are those real? It's like a little yeah, those are real. cube. I remember on a Madonna video, uh, what's it called? There's like an old 80s video yeah. when she's in that. Okay, so that's if, a real thing. If, if in other, countries, gross, in other countries, they still have things like that, don't they? I, I thought don't know. That. So it's it's even more awkward than that because there's like a whole process and procedure, right? You walk, just like the doctor's off, you walk up to the normal thing, you fill out, you sign up. and then they, they, <laughs> I'm here to jerk off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's literally what it is. It's like, yeah, I'm here to do that, right? And you look right? in the eyes. And, and you know, like, everybody yeah, knows, yeah, everybody there now knows what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Hand you the little cup and stuff. And then they tell you, and then when you go in there, it's not done. Like she comes in and then it's like, you have to hear, they have like a red tape on the floor. You, you stand behind this line. And when you're, when you're what? done, you, you fill out these things, you push this button, make sure you wash your hands here. You clean up here. You do like, there's like all this stuff. It's not worry, just thousands like thousands of guys before you've done this. Yes. No problem. I yeah. am not in the mood. <laughs> like, I didn't want to hear that. Yeah. I am not in the mood. Anymore. No, man. It was like, wow, for sure. Awful. And that, you know, and I thought maybe Did you feel ashamed when you left. <laughs> You know, I feel like oh, you guys all know what happened. I I feel like um like I underperform. That's what I feel like because I'm there to give a bunch of sperm, right? That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm there for. And so I I feel like I feel like I feel, like I feel like I feel like I hand them the cup and I'm like, listen, I could I could do a lot yeah. better than that if I didn't if I didn't have to. That's what I feel like that. Yeah, it was like you really put me on the you spot. Look, here. You you look at it and you're like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like way. <laughs> Way better at home, dude. Way better you at home. You had to get to the nurse. Yeah. You, know I mean? you head to the nurse and you're just like, you know, hey, I, you know, it was tough. I missed it. <laughs> so, Listen. Yeah. yeah. It's all about it's all about the, yeah. the potency, okay? Yeah. It's right. it's like it's like those it's like a tide pod. It's like Strong way less ones fluid, but it's way yeah. cleans a hole. Oh man. Anyway. But I mean, sorry, Doug. The, 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 sorry, Doug. So we, right we took a left on that conversation. But it, it reminded that people just expect that men, it's no big is deal. Is the room like is it like a couch? Is it nice at it's all? About, it's about very clinical. It's about half this size no they they have like a they have a, a leather lazy boy chair in there you know and it has like a like a dog pee thing on there that you can sit so you can put your naked ass cheeks on it and stuff like that and there's a tv in front and it's got <laughs> mood lighting in it and like i mean the room is uh not not nice yeah. but it's like justin said it's like you 100 percent know the last person in here was jerking off and he was yeah. sitting on that thing too like it's just I don't know. It kills it for oh, me. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It, 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 it I, I didn't even think about that, but put myself in that mental space. Yeah, that wouldn't work out so well. I mean, and everybody thinks I'm the, like, I'm weird. And I think the same thing. This is how I feel about the vasectomy thing when people when people say that. I'm like, no, I don't really. And I have to explain myself. Where like, do they it's, cut it's exactly? No, it's no big deal. It's, it's a under small the, surgery. It's in the bonch area, right? Is that where they cut you? Like under it's the bush? I think so, right? It's not at the top, like or is it at the top? I think it's. I don't know, Doug. Look it up, but don't pull up pictures, please. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm already <laughs> exactly. See, then this is going to delay your appointment. Well, you know, and Jessica, she's now encouraging it. You got it, Andrew. Where's it at? Yeah, I mean, you, you said you don't want to see a picture. No, <laughs> just tell me <laughs> just, where. Yeah, so describe a, it. There's a tube that comes from the testicles up through, you know, to the penis. Right. So, so they cut under the ball. The so. ductus vas deferens, and that Best gets deferens. snipped. Um, did you? Yeah, did you do this, Andrew? Or are you still planning on having more kids? I'm not doing oh. it. Huh? I'm not planning on Ooh. having more kids, but I'm also not planning on cutting it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so you're like us then. You're see, like, now I, right now I have see. Jessica now encouraging me, and I know she's got that, you know, at some point she'll be like, listen, <laughs> you either do that or yeah. now I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do now? You know, yeah. I guess. You know. So I got to contact the doc and let him well, know. Well, if you actually go through with it, I'll, I'll be there by your side, dude. <laughs> you hold my hand the yeah, whole time? Yeah, we'll, <laughs> if you can hold we'll, out for a we'll little bit longer, we'll be snip brothers, dude. We'll be snip brothers. Get a two for one? <laughs> you guys have a discount if I bring my friend? Can we get a deal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's hilarious. Mm, yeah. I had to post the picture. Just to really, oh, to really, to really encourage you, Thank you, you know, I'm encouraging you to do it's this. A, it's a, it's a drawing. That's yeah, fine. That's a, no big deal. It's just a tube, you guys. You know, uh, big deal. flaccid penis drawings are always so sad. Anyway. Yeah, no, <laughs> Anyway, they I are. Could, I could have like, tried to find direct ones. No, no, no we're cool. we don't need that. Hey, you know, you know what else is? <laughs> He's already got the tab open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just click under the tab, Doug. It will pull it right up. Anyway. <laughs> You know yeah. what else is sad is uh, those bored apes that everybody bought about. Bro, the, did you see the price drop? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Okay, remind us all about the controversy with those in the beginning because I'm like, well, so I don't even know what happened with that, right? Like you, I mean, remember we went down we the rabbit hole that video that basically it's a huge like huge scam. like racist prank. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh, there was like, that. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. That. But and it was a whole NFT thing and blah blah blah, and celebrities bought it. Well, the one like for example, there's one that Justin Bieber owned. I think it was worth almost two million dollars. Mm -hmm. Right now it'll it'll sell for fifty fifty something grand. Fifty thousand dollars. That's how much. That's by the way. Shh. What they think. I bet if you tried to sell it, it'd be for less. Yeah, who's yeah. gonna buy it? Like that that'd be interesting to see. Like Dude, anybody how crazy is how, how how inflated we can make the price of something just through hysteria. Yeah. You know? Do you remember all the NFT talk? It's like no talk about it at all anymore. None. I haven't heard I haven't seen oh here it is right there. Like eighty eight percent from its peak. peak. <laughs> Wow, dude. Hey, well, I mean, hey, shame on you. Shame well, on these you. These are for all not that in like the first place, though. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Shame on you. Like to, to to think that to think that something like that was gonna is gonna be that amazing and worth that You're much. You're selling a, an idea and a vision of an imaginary thing, so it's like it's not even tangible. That's a really tough sell. Again, it just highlights too how much how god how much sheep we are, bro. So, you, you, the hype train was like so everybody was so hyped up. And you know what feeds that is that there's people that were getting in and making money. Because if you catch it on the way up of the hype. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're a, a, one of the early adopters and you bought NFTs early, and then you turned right around and sold it six months later. You made And so so you do that, and then you tell everybody how much money you made, and you hype it up to them, and then they're still early enough that they go do it, and it's just mm -hmm. like it compounds, and then sooner or later it's going gonna, it's gonna to You know, it's, this is just- Digital uh, snake oil. It just goes to, hey, it just goes to show you, by, by, by historically, so, by the yes. way- Historically, there have been the many markets that have done this and crashed. Uh, so this is this is nothing new. I think that the challenge is we always think it's different this time. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, this is what do you mean? This is these are electronic. This is totally different. No, it follows the same. I've brought this up before. I think it was the tulip. I want to say the tulip inflation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where at one point they were so valued that the prices skyrocketed and then it crashed once people. We're like, wait, why? Like, we, wait a minute, this is tulips. Yeah, this is yeah. this is stupid. Why are we spending so much money? Yeah. I do, I do see that you know, Bitcoin is still hanging on though. Like it's it's been, Bitcoin has some utility though, right? But yeah, it ain't. It, I mean, right. it's not near its. Well, peak. I I still stand by what I said originally, right? I mean, I I think that the the most black utility market. is the black market. Yeah. I mean, that's where it's it, and and there's and guess what? The black market It'll is big relevant. enough. Yeah. is big enough to prop that sucker up to where it's at right now. Like, and maybe we do move to these coins at one point, but the idea that the government's not going to get their hands in the, in the universal currency that we're all going to use. No, like, they'll have their own version come of on. it. 100%. No, they have the guns. Yeah. Therefore they'll make the rules. Uh, they've already talked about it. I think the fed already said that yes. they, that they have a digital currency yeah. that they're going to. So what is that? What does that do to like Bitcoin when that happens? I mean, that's just going to plummet it. Cause then it's going to be purely just for black, black market use. Right. Unless you guys heard the theory that it was the, the intelligence agencies that created in the first place Bitcoin in the first place mm -hmm. uh, to over time be able to track what's happening kind of behind the scenes. Um, so much. Did you, did you know that, that, uh, the, you know, part of Elon's strategy of, of Twitter, what that is like, you know, to uh, eventually making it like an all in one social platform Yeah, where you can ex exchange currency yep. and everything on it. Like that's the, uh, that's the future of that. Hmm. Like in the next year or two hit the hit. I, I heard him say on the interview with Zuby that, that was like the deciding factor for Twitter was that he had already planned to build this platform that blends like, you know, the Venmo social mm. aspect all together. Like uh, China has one, right? I don't know. I forget what China's platform. Do you know what it is, Doug? The one that actually you can basically. WeChat. What? Pretty sure it's called WeChat. WeChat. Oh, WeChat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh -huh. so he already had that vision to, to build that anyways. And no acquiring Twitter would accelerate that by like three to four years. Mm. And so that's kind of how he looked at that. Like, mm. I know a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, he's going to try and bring it back and it's going to be this. And now everybody's talking about how threads is competing with Twitter. And it's like, I don't think any of that matters to him. I think it's like, it's already got a built in audience. Yeah. If, if he is, and all he had to do was come in and make it to where it's not losing money by, and which was yeah, the other, I mean, I, again, I've heard people speculate on his motivations behind it. One, another one was all of the, um, the um, data from everybody's tweets and like the way they think and all that and the human element there that that you could use that data to then use for his Neuralink and or or the the uh, open AI and so that would help to kind of feed. To I that. mean, I would not bet against him. He's the, he's the most successful entrepreneur of all time. Period. I mean, no one, nobody comes close. He's developed. He's built how many billion dollar companies? Four. More than that, I think. Five. Crazy. Yep. Just doing one alone puts you in history, right? And he did. He's done more than anybody else and innovated. Yeah. And 
the guy. And they've all been gangbusters. Yeah, so I, I would not vote against him uh, in the decisions he makes. Um, a lot of times they sound crazy. Remember when Tesla sounded crazy? Yeah. You know, he's going to make a new car in, yeah. in, a, in, a, in one of the hardest markets and not go through dealership. Completely create a new market. And yeah. make it electric and mm -hmm. have to innovate and create all these platforms yeah. just so that it could work. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't, speaking of Elon, did you see what well, you were the one uh, that showed uh, Zuck training? Oh yeah. Yeah. With, uh, what's his Adi name? Sana and the, and I forget who else he's training he's with right fit. now. The, mm -hmm. You know, the inter interesting part about what I thought was funny about that clip was we literally just got off air doing our, our live callers and you were sharing with someone who's doing jujitsu up here about, cause he's near the coast, right? He's in Santa Cruz about, um, surfing. And, and being told that surfing is like a, a great, like, uh, you know, sport or skill to do that, that has carryover into jujitsu. Yeah. And you were asking if there was any truth to that. Like literally I opened up my Instagram like five minutes after that and a video of Zuck with Adisana and, and, a, and a couple of the other MMA guys and he's wake surfing. Yeah. And I thought, oh, it's kind of funny, but dude, I, Zuck looks, looks he good. He looks fit. Bro, he looks fit. He looks athletic. Yep. Like he looks good right now. I mean, and he's a lot smaller than Elon. So if that fight really goes down, Elon better hope that he's not just counting on being 30 pounds heavier mm, to, yeah. to win this fight because yeah. he does. Zuck looks like he's actually He training. does. The thing about Zuck is he looks like a dork. You know, like oh, I could, but if you watch him move and do this stuff, you realize he's the dude yeah, can, and and he's don't fit. don't be fooled for that in that being like uh, the chip that he'll probably have on his shoulder or motivator, totally. right? Is that he's known as the like this, the, you know? So underneath, I love the internet is the best sometimes. Like yeah. that video of him surfing, yeah, like the, like one of the number one comments that's underneath yeah. it says, "This reminds me of when uh, when the the they showed the robots could jump." You know, <laughs> remember when, uh, what was that big robot company that the, um, Boston Dynamics. Yeah. Boston Dynamics showed jump. all the, the jumping yeah. robots. Everybody <laughs> lost their mind. You're like, Oh my God, look at the robots can jump now. <laughs> Dude, they can do crazy stuff now. I was like, now, though, I was like such a good my favorite video of Zuckerberg. And I, I, by the way, I, I the, empathize with him. I'm making fun of him, but if I were sitting in there, I'd probably be him drinking way more awkward. He was in Congress. He's a kid. Everybody forgets how young the dude oh, is. Yeah. Yeah, two-handed like they're, drips. they're grilling him. He's like sweating, you know. Yes. He's, he's like he was so nervous. He like forgot how to drink water. Oh yeah, this is what I must do to drink. <laughs> and I'm like, and people made fun of him. Like, hey, imagine if you were sitting there and Congress was grilling you at his I age. Know. Oh, oh, I know. Man. Uh, he's still well, how young is he now? He's early thirties. Thirty nine. Uh, oh, he's, he's thirty nine now. Yeah. He's our, he's close to our age. I thought he was younger, much younger than yeah. us. I didn't know that. that. He's, well, I mean, he's he, I mean, shit for what he does. He's well, young, yeah. man. I mean, yeah, he's been. So that post, uh, you showed that uh, UFC, like, did like who was it that posted that like poster of like that they're trying to like, oh, move that into like, I don't a think UFC that's a real, format. I don't think it's a real poster. Yeah, it couldn't see? be. What did you see? Chael Sonnen. Sonnen oh, uh, Chael Sonnen. Posted a, a poster with like, you know, Zuck and Elon on it. I don't oh, know it, wasn't a real it made it, yeah, okay, yeah. It made it look like it was like they're going to incorporate it as like part of a UFC event. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> well, the, weren't yeah, they in talks that. with Dana White though? I think he said so. I yeah. think if, I mean it'd be hilarious that like that that would be that would blow up. Like people would. Be I mean all over the that. way things are going with all these celebrity boxing matches and things yeah. like that. Like it's not weird to me at all. I mean it's it, you know what surprised, I be Jake surprised. Jake Paul hasn't jumped all over this. Y you scene. know what though? See, this is what a lot of people. Don't he's know fighting next soon too. By is he? The way. Yeah. He's so good. people don't know this. Like when you watch two people fight who don't know how to fight oh god it's not it's, it's not ugly. fun to watch it's not no, fun no, to watch no. it looks and then you start to feel bad you just let's like cringe yeah, yeah it's just not great so like ufc fans who know what fighting looks like and they're gonna see two guys just remember those um what were those matches that they used to do where they used tough to do man. that tough yeah, man. competition tough man. yes those were like so painful to watch some of them every <laughs> once in a while you got a guy but i guarantee it was somebody who had some sort of a mm -hmm background and he would always whoop the shit out of the yeah. other guy you know what i'm yeah. saying because he had some sort of training where did butterbean come from that's tough man yeah, yeah. right like, i feel the, yeah. like he went that's through an that example. and then it was like whoa yeah, there's always like the guy who has like who can throw hands that has mm -hmm. some sort of whether he got it from street fighting or he actually he actually trained a little bit that would go in there mm -hmm. and just dominate fools because most of them were just regular ass dudes that were trying to box you know? i know i know yeah anyway so uh i just read something that's really interesting did you so there's an animal, there's one animal, don't look in the notes because you guys will see the answer. There's one Very animal right. that has confused uh, like crime scene specialists before. In other words, they'll go in, they'll check the crime scene, find fingerprints, and they get baffled. And it was the, it was the, 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 the culprit was an animal. Okay. And I'll give you a hint. Their fingerprints of this animal 
closely resemble humans to the point where it's it's hard to tell unless you're like really an expert. What? The chimps? Koala. A koala oh, has fingerprints. I actually was going to say a raccoon. Yeah, koala. Okay. Koala. koala. You guys know that? What? Koala has they have a- fingerprints? Yeah, if you look up koala fingerprints to human fingerprints, uh, they they're so similar, and this is actually happening crime scenes because <laughs> they have claws, right? And it's just uh, but, you know, this uh, is something. Whenever we talk about like what animals we're closest like, this uh, this stuff always comes out, and it's like we're so close to this. I told you guys about the pig the digestive system, yeah, and it's just yeah. like it's oh, so funny when and we their take, skin they use all the time. You know, back a, to our science conversation earlier about how like well, ever since science, it's like we try and attach like, oh, we're just like these apes. This is the yeah. ones where, because we do this one thing in common and it's like, yeah, but then Look we have nothing like this. On the left is a koala. On the right is a human. Oh, wow. Right? Is that left and right right there? That's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at that. You can't oh. tell. I mean, unless you're trained, you know, and it's so it's actually happened with crime scenes where wow. there was a real case where they went in and they're like, uh. The koala killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a koala as a pet, dude. That's a good uh, insurance. You I know? heard they're vicious. Oh. I heard they're vicious and, and they, have they have high STDs. rates of chlamydia. Can we? Chlamydia, what? That's is that what true? Is. Yes. Yeah, koalas yes. have high rates of chlamydia. So oh, don't have unprotected sex. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you should, only wear a, wear a condom with a koala. It's only legal in some states. Anyway, <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> but yeah, yeah. Dude. I, you, I, you probably can't own one of those here, right? I mean, a koala? We, California has all kinds of laws. I, don't know, about I bet it. you can in Texas. Don't they own them? People own like lions and shit over there. Is that right? Dude, they have so many random exotic animals in Texas. Right? Yeah, remember like, we watched the Tiger King. Didn't it, he, wasn't he, was he wasn't in Texas? It, Where was I don't think that was Texas. No, was somewhere Texas. in the South. Florida? I think it was Florida. Florida. Oh, was it? Let me check. Yeah, I think, I, or, I think it moved think actually it to like Oklahoma was or it something. Texas? Yeah, because I believe Texas has the largest uh, place of tigers in the it world. It has the like, like, yeah, highest ownership. in captivity yeah. for sure. Now, know. Mike Tyson owned uh, tigers. He did. He but was he in California? No, he was in Nevada. Like he, he was, was in, in Vegas. Yeah, but but he, I think he got him from. How somewhere do you in get Texas. a tiger? You yeah, have tiger to get, King like, was Oklahoma, but very yeah, close. The internet. You get anything from the internet. Boom. How, but no, no. What I mean is, how do you like? Do you have to go like just get a permit? Like, how do you get a tiger? Yeah, there there, there is permits for it. So there's. I, I, so I think I haven't I shared this before. You when I, I look, no, not a tiger. I look in. <laughs> how stupid, how stupid is I had a condo when I was looking at doing this. All like, of, I, of all of us, wanted, you would be the most. I would have a tiger. I was. I looked for no. It was not a tiger. I was looking at like small like cats, like you know bobcats and stuff like that. Like the serval. Called Serval? Is yeah. that the name of it? Uh, the, the African forget- cat that, yeah. that's big and cool again. Yeah, and it's it was Nevada that had a lot of the like looser laws that, you, and you, you still have to get a permit right for it. Like, so you can you can go get it, and the permit basically all they look for is there's a certain amount of space that you have to have for like the mm. cage or whatever like that. So like I couldn't, I've obviously quickly learned that having a condo, I couldn't have any sort of crazy wild animals <laughs> living there. So Just goldfish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's about the koi fish is yeah. about as crazy as it got. No, I had a shark, you know, I had a shark for a while. Dude, hold on. Sweet. That's, that's what they check. You got enough space. They don't check to see if you're crazy or whatever. Well, I don't know the whole entire thing. I do remember though. I looked have up on the, I, people I, that I own them. Yeah, they are crazy. Yeah. I, I looked, I looked up, uh, you know, and I, I remember the per like looking up that you have to have a permit and if I recall, the main thing was just the space that you needed to have. I don't mm. know if maybe Doug can fact check me or whatever, but um, and I do know that Nevada has like some of the loosest laws in regards to like the the wild animals. You imagine you know. a burglar like breaking in a house. Well, that's exactly why I thought about that. How cool would it be <laughs> to have like an animal like that in your house and like someone break in just and be guard like guard cat, get the fuck out of here, bro? Have you got have you ever seen one in, per- in person? A what? I think it's Doug. Tiger? Look it up. I think it's a serval. I think that's the name of it. Uh, I. Um, had a friend who had a friend who had one and they took a video of them going in the house and petting it and shit. So I got to see like in context of the person. So it was a lynx that I looked up. Oh, okay. That's what it was. Oh, a lynx. lynx. Those are what? cool. The uh-huh. Well, look at this. High ears. Okay. That, I think that's it. Full grown. Bro, it looks like a little mini cheetah. Wow. It does. It's actually a bit, is uh, cool it is a serval. Cat. Doug, look up serval with a, a human or person. It's like a, I mean, they're tall. They well, look. There was a YouTube video right there. Uh, yeah, I would've... feel like John Jones had one of those. Yeah, they're they're. Yeah, look at it. That's a big ass. Oh, they look just like those. Uh, what are the the the, the starts with an M? What's what are those big cats that are that are legal that you can't have over here? That the, starts with an M. Yeah. Uh, fuck. What is it? <laughs> I was gonna I, say monkey. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Just throw <laughs> just throw just throw names out there. Mammoth. Like, no, look. Uh, <laughs> Maine Coon. Yes, oh, Maine Coon. Thank oh, you. Maine Coon. Maine Coon or Maine Coon? What Maine Coon? <laughs> have you never seen? You made up that name. No, there is. They're actually huge. No, look at them. They, and they look just kind of like that cat right there. They're they, they're giant house cats. Well, people make them house cats. See. 
Oh wow! Oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at that, look at that picture. More, oh wow! Yeah, they're huge. They're more fluffy, and you can actually get one of those. So you, and, and they're legal. Wow! That's a fat cat. That, that one looks it? more magical, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Look like he's gonna give you like a wish or something like that. <laughs> my, my family had a Maine Coon. <laughs> what? Your family had one? Yeah. He just really? Passed, he just passed though. Oh wow! Very, Was it? Uh, are they nice? Or are they like what are they? Uh, more aggressive than regular cats. They're nice, but um. They're not as friendly, much more vicious when you have like food around. And they were oh. bringing lots of rats. I was going to say, they'll, they'll bring in big rodents. Like it was always out. It was always out and about. Yeah, they'll, they'll attack like big ass rodents. And wow. Bring, but they, look how big some of those suckers wow. are. Yeah. Where, I, where I live, because I'm up against the foothills, uh, there's, a, there's a bobcat that always comes up on the, on the fence. Yeah, we get those running through. Yeah. We also Our, get cougars running through too. Have you seen them? Yeah. You've seen them? Yeah, on our uh, Nest camera. Oh wow! Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. Like they're there, but it's like they're usually just passing through. And um, uh, one of my neighbors, though, he's seen it like multiple times, so it is alarming because like you want to pay attention to their patterns. If I have I have like a little dog, and mm -hmm. it's like that's total like animal fair game for animal help. He, he was a, back in the day he was a cougar expert, so he was yeah, explaining. I, I was waiting for that joke. Like patterns and stuff, different and, types. Yeah. Of what to look for? <laughs> what to look out for? This is hilarious. <laughs> just leaving, cr leaving crumbs for those cougars. Anyway, I, I, I want to bring something up that I thought was amazing that maybe you would be excited about. I don't know, Justin. Okay. Uh, did you guys see the cheeseburger in, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it's Thailand? Yeah. The, Burger King has a meatless cheeseburger. Okay. I, okay. Okay. Pretend I that, that, is that like, real? a cheese thing comes out and I don't get tagged. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, pretend. <laughs> it's not, I know I can never bring any cheese hey, news to him anymore. It's a bread. We've, ruined, it, we've ruined his DM. Eighty-five forever. slices of Over cheese it. between bread. Yeah. Is it real? I thought that was a. I thought that was being funny. I thought it was it like looks. The, it looks like. I thought it was real. like it's the, in Thailand. I mean, uh, uh, so I don't know. I can't really confirm. Let's but. fact check this. I thought it was like a joke towards the like anti meat movement. Oh, that, that's what I thought it you was. Might be right, but I don't know. Is it I, twenty I, we all slices saw of cheese in between? A, <laughs> Two buns you know what it makes me think? It's a grilled it, cheese it, at that point. It, okay, yeah, right? it reminds me of what you would do if you were 14 at home, mom and dad are at home, you're hungry oh, like, as hell. No, there's no meat. Yeah. Uh, all oh, right, yeah, just, just put a stack of Just put a ton of cheese in between the bread, <laughs> and I'm going to eat the hell out of it. What do you guys got for us over there? It is. It is. Uh, yeah, it seems to be real. Yep. Wow. 20 slices of American cheese between a bun. Dude. Okay, so I need some uh, I need some people to kind of give us feedback, like from Thailand. Like, did, are they that into cheese over there? Because that's a honestly, I'm I shocked. Want to go. I feel I'm not. I feel like these fast food restaurants. This has been the trend, I think, for the, like the last decade plus. Is some you come up with? Yes, thing. you come out with this like radical sandwich or burger, and it doesn't even matter if they sell. It's that it gets. Publicity. publicity you're right and now we're talking about <laughs> look it, at it bro. yeah like <laughs> they sell 10 of them right and then and then you know but everyone's talking about how ridiculous it is or whatever with that and so then it drives traffic didn't burger then, king was it burger king sense. that came out oh that was kfc never mind they did the burger it was like a, a chicken it was like a bacon burger but the buns was fried chicken yeah that was oh uh, yeah yeah that no, was actually kind of awesome they did something with like black buns or whatever yeah it just ended up looking like it was like molded bread and yeah so it didn't do well oh they did that, that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it was for halloween yes it was for halloween yeah that, uh black ketchup you guys remember black that? ketchup too yeah you guys remember that yeah, yeah. heinz did that mm -hmm. nobody bought that clear shit. pepsi Any ketchup that's not red is yeah. suspect disgusting it'd anyway. be fun it would actually be fun to go through like some of the best and worst like marketing ideas for mm -hmm. companies like that that things that like hit a home run that you would have one never expected or stuff that like totally bombed mm -hmm. or, or hurt the business dude i gotta tell you guys i had a, a funny experience uh the other day at a family event my um i think this happened to you too Adam, my cousin brings her boyfriend and I hadn't really met him before. And so we're all hanging out and stuff. And she's like, come on, you can tell him, you can tell him. So in my head, I'm like, oh, he must, you know, recognize me from my pump. <laughs> right? so he oh comes God. Up to me, oh goes, God. He goes, uh, I've seen you on like Viori ads. Oh, like, how do you, yeah, yeah. Do you work with Viori? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, bro. <laughs> I thought he was going to talk about my pump. Hey, those are going everywhere. Right everybody now. sees me on the Viori yeah. ads. I, I know. I get Viori and Caldera. Those are the two ads that are, are like getting a lot of traction. And I get, I've more often than not in my family. That's how much they've grown. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where yeah. it's like a big deal. People yeah, are yeah. I mean, I, you, you figure Viori is uh, a bigger company than we are, right? So mm -hmm. they, that's, they're, they're, they're probably pumping those ads out pretty hard. So it's it's funny though that they 
people how people attach like fame and stuff yes. you know like I, i'll get it like oh my god i can't believe how famous you are i was like huh and they're like yeah, yeah so you're on this viori commercial I'm like, <laughs> yes so i'm that, famous now that's what makes me famous like, dude i don't use Facebook except for like the forum and that's literally it right and uh it was the same thing it was like uh, all of a sudden now I get like a cousin you know, that lives in Minnesota is like, Oh, I just like, you're doing huge things. I'm like, this is what you think I'm doing. That's like the huge thing. <laughs> yeah. Like that's cool. But like, you oh. know, there's not even paying attention. Yeah. Cause I don't post anything on there. I, I don't blame them or anything, yeah. but it's just kind of funny that that's but the thing. Justin's an athleisure wear model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I, on top of all those right. last night, literally last night I'm, uh, giving Max a bath and I get a text from my dad. And and he starts it with like, oh my God, so I'm so proud of you, right? And then he tells me he's he's like, I'm getting a colonoscopy today, right? I'm like, okay, where's this going, right? And of course, uh, bragging about you like I always do uh, to the doctor. Yeah. And uh, a nurse overhears me, goes, oh my God, are you talking about Mind Pump? My husband and I absolutely love them. We listen to them every Why single day. Why are they getting a colonoscopy? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like nurse, hold on a second. I need another finger. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I'm glad I could be a bright spot in your day on that. So. <laughs> hey, like, yeah, oh yeah, Adam. Yeah, now he's, he's now like, imagine if that was you getting a colonoscopy. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? The yeah. doctor's like, and the nurse comes like, "Hey, wait, are you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck. yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, cool. So proud. Yeah. yeah, so proud. That's so. That's nice though. It's right? like yeah. you're still in the junk food, huh? No, no, yeah, it's it's yeah. great. It's great that you know. I'm sure that for him, that's amazing, right? <laughs> Is that why your cola looks so good? You take their products. <laughs> 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 Your stuff. Uh, oh, that's so, awkward. So, Justin, I uh, I know you're super into UFOs, so I want to show you something. Cool. I am. It's it's a past. I know of you're like the sure. guy that knows yeah. this kind of stuff, dude. Um, you know how it's like a thing where like there's a big thing with UFO people. What do they call them? UFOlogists? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, don't put me in that category. But ain't yeah. Like old paintings and drawings and cave paintings. Mm -hmm all showing what looked to be like UFOs and aliens and stuff and all looking similar mm -hmm. with cultures that didn't communicate with each other. So it's not like they, they, it was like they learned from someone else. It was their own experience. Dude, I found a 200 year old, uh, like drawing or painting and it taught, it tells a story, uh, that happened in Japan in the Hitachi province. Mm. Apparently this, this disc or object washed ashore and a woman with who wore strange fabric and spoke an unknown language came out and talked to the people and had a small box. And they the person there drew it and everything. And it's a freaking UFO, dude. Look, that's a 200 year old. Oh wow, look at how that. How weird is that? Like this is before anybody in Japan would have been like, that's what a UFO looks like. Yeah. Like, when you keep seeing stuff like that, like, oh, there it is. Look. You've that's seen so the, weird. I don't know if it's it's not Chichen Itza, but it's uh, one of those step pyramids down in South America. But yeah. Where, um, not Quasicol. I forget the name, but it's like one of their Aztec gods that they have like oh, etched in like there. And he looks like he's like operating a, uh, a helicopter. No, not the helicopter one, but that one's interesting that one, too. Yeah. This one's like a, like a rocket. And, oh, and he literally has his hand on like a... Uh, like he's pulling a, a lever and his foot's like on a pedal and it's so, and, and they try to like explain it. Like it's like some, some vessel to the afterlife or something, but it's just like, it's so trippy uh, to say the least. Yeah. It's all weird stuff. Uh, it, like there's, I've heard people say that um, people that humans will hallucinate similarly and uh, that could explain it. But then why would we all hallucinate in very similar, you know, strange ways? Hmm. Well, um, you know what sucks about this is that if that's true and it's like 200 years ago they were showing this stuff, it just shows that like th like what makes us think that we're going to get any closer to finding out. Like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this maybe that we've been well, we, they're observing us like they like we're like zoo animals, and that's just these are just a few that over the last yeah. hundred years that have crashed, and they have this invisible technology, and that's just malfunctioned on a couple of them that ended up crashing, and so somebody saw them. Yeah, and, and this cover up and suppression of information, it just makes the whole thing it, it builds way more mystery around. It's like, you know, there's pyramids and, and, and things they found in China that like they've flown over it. And then the next time they flow over, fly over it, it's like all buried again. And so it's like, it's just weird. You know, it's like in some, in some things that they find and then um, uh, certain cultures, like people come in, they just destroy it right away. And it's like, oh my God, there was probably a wealth of knowledge there. So that fascinates me more is like 
like I didn't know like until potential said, lost knowledge. Yes, it, I'm I'm like more fascinated by. I mean, the other day I didn't even know this. We just I, or just heard for the first time. I didn't even know there was uh, pyramids in An- Antarctica. So like you have these yeah. pyramids in like Antarctica, Mexico, Egypt, like in these, yeah. like you uh, know they all they all line up uh, with constellations or constellations. Yeah. So so like here we are, these random places all over the world where obviously we didn't have planes and ways to get over or communication back and forth. Yet we were able to come up with these incredibly complex buildings back then without any of these crazy tools that we had. And they all look similar. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. that to me is wild. Like that, that I'm, and that's something we can see that's tangible today. So like the UFO thing is like, Oh, it could be hallucination. could be like, whatever. Like uh, we don't have anything tangible. That is tangible and weird enough for me that like that fascinates me. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's strange because uh, the accounts are so similar Mm -hmm. in all these different cultures. Like it looks like you're looking at this 200 year old, drawing it looks like a you like a ufo you would draw today yeah and you're talking about like the renaissance era where they've yeah. done paintings and you see like these gold um and then they, they've tried to say it's like um i don't know if it's if it's like a- angelic like um uh, light oh, oh that that's they're right. kind of trying to depict or like halos or whatever but it really looks like little uh ufos, UFOs that are right behind them yeah, and so weird. it's just it's just strange that it's if, and it's kind of too like when you start to kind of really look for something, like you start seeing it more yeah, in right, things. Right. Like, you find like, that phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not like, you know, your your typical kind of all in. What is guy. that phenomenon called? There's there's a name for that, right? So the same, isn't it the same name that like when you get the car that also you see the same car? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's the same a, there's a, there's a, isn't there a term for that, Doug? I think there's something called the reticular activator or something like that wow. that's involved with that. that you might be right. Holy yeah. Yeah. He just something pulled that right out. Oh, he he yeah. does have the computer right in front of him. So. <laughs> okay. no, I do, right here. <laughs> right here. All right, this is, here's a shout out. It's just pure humor. Some of it inappropriate. Some of it weird. It's just funny. Uh, it's a page on Instagram, Trash Can Paul. Uh, it's hilarious. I You'll, follow that one. Yeah, I just, we just it's die laughing yeah. sometimes. Justin and I will yeah. share memes and stuff from there, so check them out. Paleo Valley makes grass-fed meat sticks that have great macronutrient profiles, so great in protein. Of course, they're grass-fed, so they're healthy. They taste amazing. They're not dry, and you can take them with you anywhere, and they have lots of different types. Go check them out. If you want to be healthy and you want protein on the go, uh, it's one of the best options. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mindpump. Use the code mindpump15 for 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Latrell from Oklahoma. What's up, Latrell? How can we help you? All right. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous right now. Just going to get that out there. <laughs> and I've written down everything I wanted to say beforehand just so I don't mess up. Um, and then first off, thank you for taking my call. And hopefully I can get some answers and just some guidance on some of the issues I've been dealing with. Okay. All right. Let's hear it. All right. So I'm 23 years old. And in the year 2017, I began training in professional wrestling. In 2018, I had a match, and a few times in the match, I took a move called the pedigree, in which my hands were behind my back, and I spiked myself on top of my head. The third time, I felt a pinch in the left side of my neck and tingling down my left arm. The next day, I noticed my bicep atrophy quite a bit on the left side. I would also feel tingling down my left arm during the day, and my bicep would even turn purple when I performed bicep exercises. I did not get looked at and continued to wrestle until late 2020. Mid-2020, I began to have sciatica in my lower back, down on my hamstrings on occasion, until it eventually went away, but now I have little feeling in my hamstrings. For over a year now, I've listened to countless episodes of your show. In January this year, I attended a PT workshop and was evaluated on my overhead squat. After I did the overhead squat, the PT instructor said he was scared for me, and the look on his face even scared me. He told me to be very careful when training. Since then, I've been hyper-focused on mobility, my protein targets, sleep, the relationships with the people around me, creatine, Wim Hof's breathing technique, and a lot of big factors when they're trying to increase the range of motion of major joints and connection to muscles when lifting. Lifting based off of form and technique rather than the weight, and mostly correctors, corrective exercises and or priming, following Max Prime Pro, Prime, Anabolic, and Performance. My ranges of motion have improved, huge appetite increase from a typical hard gainer, but I don't feel like I'm inside my body, especially my posterior chain. 
Prime Pro movements that target the neck aren't getting me any any more connected as I know they should be. For example, my girlfriend loves handcuffs with rotation, but I don't feel connected to my shoulders, thoracic spine, and sometimes feel sensations in my lower back. I lack a lot of grip strength, even struggling to pick up smaller objects. All in all, I cannot feel my own body. I'm constantly practicing zone one wall test, even at my serving job during town times. A couple weeks ago, I consumed cannabis. In an immobility session, when it's a zone one wall test while simultaneously holding a resistance band and doing an isometric bicep curl, I felt my entire body's range of motion, connection, and my overall strength was boosted in an instant. Basically, I felt like I was carrying my own body again all at once. This connection lasted a couple days, and I haven't been able to find it since. I'm confused on whether it's something I'm not doing, am I not trusting the process, or am I go about correcting my spinal issues the wrong way? maybe even a combination of all of them. I would appreciate any guidance on this as you were the only source of fitness knowledge I truly trust. Yeah, so the moral, tr- moral of the story, marijuana is a miracle drug. Yeah. <laughs> there. yeah. Smoke more weed. All right, thanks for calling it. No, listen. Brought to you by Big Cannabis. There's a, couple, uh, there's a couple things here that are going on. So the improved connection through cannabis uh, is more of a subjective thing uh, with a single you know, dose. Um in some cases with nerve issues, there's limited studies, but there could be improvement with uh, certain neural connections, but that's kind of, I don't know, it's a little cloudy. I would say it's more of a subjective thing because even somebody with no nerve damage would hmm. sometimes experience or, or say they experience the same thing. So that's more, that's, that's kind of down there. So let's, let's cut that out for a second and let's talk about what might be going on. First off, you know, all the stuff you're doing is not wrong or bad. Um, but you need to see a, an a expert. Yeah, you somebody. need to see an, you need to see an expert uh, and and get your potential nerve damage evaluated because an it, actual neurologist, not like a general practitioner. No, no, no. So yeah, somebody who's an expert uh, who can who can test you for any potential nerve damage. You know, if you have impingement on a nerve, a lot of times you can improve it significantly. Sometimes nerve damage is so bad that all you can do is uh, work with what you have. And there's only so far you can go. I, I there's no way for me to comment on on what's going on with you because uh, number one, I can't assess you. Number two, uh, I'm not an expert on on nerve damage. I would yeah. I would if you were my client, I would send you to somebody to get that all tested. So um, telling me that you don't have feeling in your hamstring, tingling on one side, weakness on one side, that all speaks to um, some some nerve damage. Uh, that might need to be identified. And if you don't, here's the risk, okay? The risk is potentially making it worse uh, with exercises that would otherwise be innocuous because um, of your individual uh, situation. So you, you need to go see someone. You need to go get assessed to kind of see what's going on. Especially and if it's it persisting, there. right? It's something that you're noticing. It hasn't improved much. I mean, because you are doing a lot of things that – um, naturally would, would help to kind of benefit uh, the connectivity aspect. Um, but I mean, if you're not noticing that and, and two, uh, you know, that's just one of those, those areas that, uh, like you, you really need to get somebody that knows specifically, uh, how to address nerve damage. Uh, Yeah. I want to point out that the stuff that you are doing. So if this would happen to me, like I probably would have went the same route you did. Like all these things that you're doing, I think are, 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 were, are not bad. Like this would be how I would start to troubleshoot this. But if I was still still having issues, like then that's where this would work. This at this point, this is where I would go. Okay, I need to go see somebody because yeah. I'm doing all of my mobility stuff. I'm trying to address my neck stuff. I'm trying to address all this postural. Stuff. I'm trying to address all the things that I know how to address that I can potentially help this. And I'm still feeling this. It's now beyond my scope. Like now, it's time for me to go. And actually have like an and again a neurologist. If you go see like a GP, you go see like a trainer, you go see someone who is is not a specialist in nerves. Like they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to help you like uh, like they can. Yeah. So how long ago did this happen? Uh, so this was about five years ago. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So here, look. Okay. I, I, here's where I'm empathetic. I, I'm see, yeah. I'm looking at your age. You're you're 23. <clears throat> um, look, even now I have trouble with going to see a professional when I need to. Okay. I, I even am super reluctant now. My wife gets on my case all the time, but let me ask you this. Why haven't you gone to see somebody? Why don't you go see an expert and say, Hey, my biceps turning colors. I can't feel my arm, my hamstring. Like, why don't you see somebody? So the, the turning colors and the tingling hasn't happened since that year. 
the reason I didn't go and see someone is because literally a month um, after that had happened, I was going to Japan to wrestle. And so I didn't want them to tell me, yeah. you know, oh, it's mm -hmm. not okay. a good idea mm -hmm. to okay. wrestle. So, uh, understandable. Yeah. That makes sense. Just <clears throat> being, being young and young and dumb. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's stop that now and go see somebody. Yeah. yeah you're, 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 right. you're well beyond the point of, you know, this, this is a strength issue or you could fix this on your own or whatever. Now, look, here's the deal. Um, let's say you go and they're like, okay, you have some nerve damage. Um, there's not much we can do aside from surgery. Then you got to do a little evaluation. Five years later, I would say surgery in some cases is appropriate. Most cases, probably not. In which case you're working with what you can work with mm -hmm. and strengthening is always a good thing. It's going to get better than it would had you not done those things, but you may be limited by damage. And sometimes nerve damage is, you know, this, oftentimes if it's really bad damage, it, it doesn't come back, but that doesn't mean you can't make yourself a lot better than had you not, you know, done this work the, that, you, yeah. that you're doing now. But anyway. to get a proper diagnosis and get some clarity as to, you know, what right. your limitations might be, you know, and that way you can kind of work around and kind of build up some strength to support that. Um, but I just, yeah, I, I, I totally understand that. I mean, I'm like, I, I'm speaking like that. Like I, I, I struggle with the same thing in terms of like going to, um, you know, get evaluated and go in and, and see, a, you know, a doctor. So, um, you know, I, I empathize with that, but yeah, it's, it's at that point where it, that's literally the only advice. Yeah, I, I mean, this is what I would have done. I would have done the same thing. So, I mean, kudos to you for that. Right. I mean, you know, you hammered yourself for being stubborn or young and dumb by not yeah. going to see a yeah, specialist. But right? Yeah. right. But being honest, like if I had some issue like this, I I would first try and figure it out. This myself. is actually not bad because uh, yeah. most guys your age would have been Just like, ignore it. Yeah, walk it off. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's was awesome. some and we it. and we might find out that the stuff that you are doing is what is going to be necessary going forward. Is like that's what you do to, yeah. to not have gotten worse. Maybe you would have gotten worse had you not. Oh, done for something. sure, you would have gotten worse. Yeah. For sure, based right. off what you're saying. Right, and that was the that was the big reason that I didn't um, go and see someone is because I didn't. That's why I'm really glad I called because I didn't even know who I would go see. I'm like, okay, do I go see a physical therapist, a personal trainer, a neurologist? I had no idea which direction I should go. And I actually, I actually didn't even know that I was dealing with this issue as much as I was until there was a day that I had consumed cannabis again. I went into a mobility session. I was like, I'm not feeling my body. <laughs> and yeah. so mm -hmm. then now well, I'm here. Look, look, that yeah. could be related to nerve stuff. It could also just be psychological, like to be quite honest, Latrell, uh, to be a high level athlete, especially to be young, it's a skill set, but it's also a detriment to be able to disconnect from pain in your body. And let's be honest, being a pro wrestler, like yeah. if you sit there and you get feel a high tolerance, yeah, if you sit there and feel every damn bump, like you ain't going to do that. That's like, like people don't realize right. just how painful, like just cause it's scripted. We know who's going to win. Who's going to lose. It don't mean you come out feeling okay. I don't think no. there's a single match you come out where you don't have some kind of injury. So you kind of had you had to learn that, um, so I don't know if if cannabis if it's more of a psychological thing. So I would, I, I, for, if I were you, I would just cut that out for a second. Just don't even consider that. I would mm -hmm. actually go see a good physical therapist first, and here's why: a physical therapist knows when to refer to somebody who is a nerve specialist. Mm -hmm. A nerve specialist. They're going to look at everything through a kind of a, a, a deep but limited scope. Right. They could potentially yeah. just send you away and go like, That's oh, I don't see point. anything. Surgery. No, yeah. they could just or like, say surgery. yeah, we're going to operate, right? Whereas yeah. a physical therapist right. might Everything's be like, well, yeah, let's see if this movement might help and, and let's start with that first or let me work with a nerve specialist. So I would go to a physical therapist, let them know what's going on and how you want to see someone. And then working with a, a, you know, a nerve specialist plus a physical therapist would probably be mm -hmm. uh, the best approach. But look, not just to motivate you further. Mm -hmm. Because I know you're young, you got lots of energy, you're probably very motivated um, to just power through things. Go get this looked at because if you do the wrong thing, this could go real bad, real fast. Right. Okay. Exactly. And that's what I don't want to do. So I'm, okay. that's why I've been mainly focused on the mobility and not, I really haven't even been lifting for strength. I've purely just been lifting for range of motion and trying to just get my body to be able to be, you know, applicable or, or just have better okay. movement. Yeah. Okay, good. Smart. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Yeah. yeah, go see someone ASAP. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have uh, Doug put you in our private forum. That way we can keep an eye on you and talk to you there. Plus, we actually have our, our good buddy, Dr. Brink, in there. I think Shallow's in there. So we have some some guys that have some PT backgrounds that uh, may be able to point you in the direction. Because I, I know you're in Oklahoma, yeah. so maybe we can find somebody that's a referral from us uh, out there that would be a good specialist.
Yeah, that would be great too. Cause even being a personal trainer, I was like, okay, there's a lot of, they might be in the field, but I don't need even knowing like, you know, it's, yeah. they might not know as well so even having like some referral would be great as well. Excellent. yeah 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 sure. we'll have you i'll have doug send you uh access to that so hop in there and then uh, make sure you stay in touch with us yep all right thank you so much thanks, i really appreciate it all right, man. all right man boy typical guy right I, <laughs> you know, bro like, i would do the same thing i know I would, especially at his age i would even do it now yeah. i would it's just for just being straight up like if i had some shit that i like, felt that i'd be like oh, okay let me see if i can see if i can work through it yeah but. let me think let me <laughs> I see mean, if for I can. five years though <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah maybe not five years five years i got some shit bothering me. <laughs> 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 especially nerve too yeah. like that's different right yeah. there's different there's difference between like uh you know like a nagging chronic pain or something that that flares up or down or inflammation or something like that and then there's like like not feeling your yeah, body. I mean, like that's pretty that, alarming. That would probably freak, bicep turn purple. Yeah, that would probably yeah. freak me it's out. It's like the enough. typical, like, oh, you, this hurts. Go eat some grass and go for a walk. You'll feel better. You know, <laughs> you know what though? Like it. You know, it's like you do it for a dog. You know, he, it, you know, you, you yeah. get why he did it, right? He's, I know. I totally. mean, he's trying to make it make a career yeah. out of. You know, wrestling by the way, and, this is one of the reasons. By the way, one of the factors. There's other factors too, but one of the reasons why men uh, tend to die earlier is they wait so long. Yeah. Yeah. Like the diagno the the late stage uh, terminal diagnosis with men is higher than it is with of course women. Of it is, Because yeah. a little of the doctor, and the doctor would be like, uh, you're like, I'm so glad you came here. You, you should have yeah. died any day now. How long have you been noticing this? Well, it's been happening for like five years. I Dude, thought it was- We're yeah. the worst <laughs> at seeking help. I Terrible. Mean, uh, yeah. Our next caller is Taylor from California. Taylor, what's happening? How can we help you? Uh, not much. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I, it. uh, found you guys late last year. Uh, when I started work from home and needed something to kind of fill the void of being alone at home working and stuff. So I've been really enjoying the whole, uh, backlog of, uh, podcasts and everything. Uh, so we appreciate it. Cool. So for the past, uh, six months, I've been running a six day, uh, pull a push legs, uh, beginner strength routine. Um, I've been more seriously lifting for about a year now. Um, though back in high school, I did water polo and swim. So weightlifting wasn't a foreign concept to me. Um, after about a few months, the beginner gains, uh, began to, uh, taper off and ever, uh, since then, I really uh, stalled out on the four primary lifts, bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press. Uh, during this time, I was also running two and a half miles a day and with an hour walk after work as well. Um, I've gradually increased uh, my calories from 2,200 up to about 2,500 right now to try and remedy the plateau. And I still haven't really seen any increases in strength or weight. Um, and, and so I've been hovering at right around 155 pounds and I'm five foot 10. Um, and at the end of every workout, I'm definitely fatigued, tired and everything. So I know it's not a case of not going hard enough, uh, during workouts. Um, and more recently I've been experiencing really low libido, low motivation to work out and general fatigue. Um, I got my testosterone tested and I come to find out, uh, that it's in the teens actually. And me being 27 year old male, uh, that's pretty shocking. Um, my primary goal has been to increase size and strength, uh, with minimal fat gain, hence all the cardio and everything I'm trying trying to do a lean bulking approach. Um, and it's my question for you guys is the lack of progress likely more due to low testosterone, uh, overtraining, uh, likely some combination of both. And when I do start TRT, uh, what can I expect? Um, as far as gym performance and just general the quality of life improvements I have, started on it actually a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I've noticed a little bit of mood improvement, things like that. Uh, I was wanting to get your opinion on what else to expect as I continue therapy, um, increase calories further, revamp my workouts. What do you think? Yeah. Taylor, you've been listening to our show for a little while. 
I have. What, what do you think we're going to say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Prediction. Here we Over go. Overtraining for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. look, okay. Uh, uh, all the above, though. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I want to get this clear. Teens, you were in the low teens. Is that what you said? That's what it said. Yeah, that is uh, alarming. So, yeah, low teens. Even like double digits is uh pretty concerning yeah so. yeah so overtraining um over stress will hammer testosterone so your lack of gains is it coming from low testosterone i mean yeah some of it but what's the low testosterone coming from you're beating the shit out yes. of yourself yeah you're, you're, okay so uh you're six days a week you're doing it all as, the cardio and it's a beginner beginner strength training program yeah, six which, days a week that doesn't sound like what, a beginner, what beginner program. program is this yeah uh, yeah exactly <laughs> so I found it on Reddit. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, a yeah. pretty popular one. It's just called like Reddit six day pull push legs. Yeah. Um, I will mention that I did like definitely add extra exercises and extra sets. Oh God. Yeah. Um, especially for <laughs> Snuck that one in on us too. Okay. Yeah. Taylor, yeah, bro. Taylor, this is look, <laughs> let me, okay. So here's the deal with add the calories, math 15. And then you're, yo, I would have actually liked to get a hold of you before the TRT. Cause I would have liked to see what I could have done first. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think I think that simply reducing the intensity and or volume of training, bumping your calories, dropping the running, mm -hmm. uh, putting you on a program more like a MAPS 15 or a MAPS anabolic, uh, mm -hmm. I think we could all, and then focusing on things like sleep, uh, make sure we've got a good balance, make sure you're getting sleep, good, healthy sun, fats, recovery. sun, yeah, like there's a lot of things that I would have liked to have done with you first just to see what I could mm -hmm. do, but it sounds like your TRT was in the, uh, you know, your, uh, your testosterone was in the floor. So, um. so let's, okay. We got to dive a little deeper here. So you, you're like, oh my God, I feel like crap. I'm going to bump my calories 300. Why did you only bump your calories up 300? Why not more? Uh, minimizing fat gain. Uh, last year I did a pretty aggressive crash diet. Um, where, and you guys are going to hate me for this. I was down to like 1500 calories and like running twice as much as I'm doing right now. Mm. Well, Did that for a few months and I just felt so lousy. So I stopped doing that. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that really killed my, uh, testosterone. Yeah. And then I just never really checked that's, up on it. That's until right. That's here. right. And then, no, you're right. You, that's, yeah. this is where this started. And then you just have not tried to truly recover. Yeah. You think you did something to recover, but you didn't. Here's the second question. So question one was, why did you only bump at 300? I'm afraid of gaining body fat. Mm -hmm. Second part of the question, why haven't you cut the volume and intensity uh, of all your workouts? I like to work hard. Um, why? Man. It's not for results, obviously, because you're not getting any. So why, right, right. why do you like to work hard? To feel like I'm doing something right. Um, okay. Okay. So, yeah. so this goes a lot deeper than what you're asking. <clears throat> okay. So you're abusing exercise and diet. So you got to look a little deeper because I'm going to give you advice. It's not going to help you though, until you realize what you're doing with your workouts and your diet. Okay. Cause mm -hmm. it's not for results. That's not why you're doing it. Cause you're not getting good results. It's not to feel good because not you feel good. like shit. So this is an abusive relationship that you have with exercise and diet. You're abusing it like a drug, like when someone's an alcoholic and they're dying, but they won't stop drinking. Um, this is what's happening with you in exercise, obviously not to that extreme, but um, you're not touching those things because you have a poor, this is a dysfunctional relationship. So uh, now I need you to look at that very closely and pay attention to it because what needs to happen is this. First off, be going on testosterone replacement therapy with everything that's going on, it's like your house is on fire and then you get a squirt gun and you start squirting water at the house. Like, is testosterone going to help you feel better? Uh, a little bit. It ain't going to save you. I promise you that. Mm -hmm. You're still going to, you're still going to drive yourself. In fact, you're going to be worse. Yeah. Cause you're going to, it's going to mask more confidence. It's going to mask yeah. some of the symptoms uh, and you're going to continue to probably do things that you shouldn't do. Yeah. You, like if you were my client, uh, and look, there's two ways I would approach this. Okay. One would be this real mm -hmm. gradual, approach because I need you to be consistent. And I know psychologically it'll be really hard to do what you need to do. The second way would be, okay, if I know you're going to do what I'm going to tell you, this is what I'm going to tell you to do. You're going to take two weeks off completely. You're going to bump your calories up to about 2,800 calories. When you go back to working out, you're going to lift weights twice a week 
and you're going to keep your calories at about 2,800 calories. And you stay there until you start to feel freaking strong and amazing. And then we'll add another day of strength training. And then we're going to stay there for like a year. That's it. Now you can walk. That's fine. I'm not going to have you run. I'm not going to have you do anything else. You want to walk? Fine. Go for a leisurely walk. Your walks should not be workouts. They should be just leisurely. And that's it. That's where I keep you for a long, like a year is where I keep you to allow your body to heal. Now, are you, do you think you're able to do that? Or do you think that's going to be too challenging for you psychologically? That might be kind of challenging for me psychologically because I'm also a pretty competitive person and I have a few friends that also work out a lot that are also really into weightlifting and stuff. And they're always like sending me Snapchats of, Oh, I got a new PR. Oh, I got that's awesome. this and that. That's awesome. You, are they real friends? Or are they just like, like, you know what I mean by like, do they really care about your well being? Are they supportive or are they just like friends you made through working out where you just try and push each other? No, we've been buddies for years. We oh. used to go backpacking oh. all the time and everything. So it's coming from a good place. I'm just reading way too much into it. And like, I want to be able to like, keep up and like be competitive with them because that's fun. You too. will, you will be, you yeah. will be if mm -hmm. we do this right. Yeah. Taylor, are, are, so send them, send them this episode when it airs and I'm going to talk to your mm -hmm. friends right now. Taylor needs your support and he's going to get triggered with the competitive stuff. He's abusing exercise and hurting his body. So he needs your support. He's going to be working out way less. He needs to eat more. He needs to get himself better. So if these are really good friends, then they're going to help uh, do that for you. Because I know how triggering that can be when you're watching other people do mm -hmm. what you think you should be able to do and mm -hmm. it's, it's not working for you. Do you want to send him uh, Maps Anabolic or Maps 15 to oh, start? Oh, uh, you know, I like Maps Anabolic. Yeah, I, because like two times a week? Yep, because I know what will happen if we give him Maps 15. It'll turn into exactly. Maps 60. Because yeah. so, <laughs> it's so many days a week. Yeah. Yeah. Maps exactly. Anabolic, do the two days a week foundational workouts. Bump your calories, and I suggest you work with somebody on the root reasons as to why you're abusing exercise the way you are. A therapist would be a good idea, but I think that's going to solve that'll that'll really help you quite a bit. Otherwise, you're going to go. This is going to be a like your, your body's going to get the, the signals are going to get louder. Did you did did I hear you say when we first started talking that uh, you really have only been like consistent training for the last year or two years? Is that when when did you get into like fitness? Uh, the past year I would say I started off at my like crappy apartment gym and then eventually I uh moved over to plant fitness for a couple months uh I realized that was horrible uh, and I found an actual gym with like actual equipment and stuff so since last October I've been doing proper uh barbell training yeah and you so and what before was that you played water polo right yeah. how many years did you do that for uh back in high school uh so that was only four years Okay. What was, what was the, the catalyst to, 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 to motivate you to go and start working out? I mean, what was there uh, a something physically that you wanted to change? Was there a competition that came up? Was there, what made you go, I'm going to start working out? Mm -hmm. uh, so it started off with me, like just kind of wanting to challenge myself to like, see if I could lose weight. Cause I'd never really deliberately, tried losing weight before. So I was like, okay, screw it. I'll try it to see if I can do it. Uh, and then I got down from 170 pounds down to like 150. And I was like, okay, now I got to build myself back up because I'm just too small, too scrawny. And that's when I picked up weightlifting because I was wanting to actually put on some size and strength. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be a, um, this, the challenge for you is not the same challenge that most people have. Most people's challenge is consistency and how do I stick with this and all that stuff. Your challenge is going to be, how do I not abuse this? How do I keep, how do I create a relationship where this is beneficial and not destructive? Uh, so you're going to, I mean, I, I would have to pull you back constantly if you're my client, the, which is the opposite of what I tend to have to the do. The truth is though, if you do, if you listen to exactly the, the, what you, what Sal said, as far as the two days a week, bump the calories all the way up, cut out the running and, and, and stick to that. You should actually yeah. feel and see a difference. Like within weeks, like you'll start to feel better, look better, all the above here. I'll, I'll trip you out right now, Taylor. So I'm going to make a prediction that I'll bet money on. You take two weeks off completely. Okay. You just started TRT. What a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. You take two weeks off completely. When you go back to working out, you're going to have significant strength gains. Mm-hmm. 
from taking two weeks off. You're going to go back, Easily. you'll do a couple exercises, and you're going to be stronger. Okay. Okay? And when that happens, so long as you feed yourself, so don't starve yourself, when that happens, there's your hint, there's your clue, like, oh, shit, uh, uh, I've been really overdoing it. We didn't we didn't get into your macros at all or anything like that, but did you did you dramatically cut any single macro? Did you like reduce fat like really low or do anything like that, or did you just go by calories? I definitely prioritized uh, protein. This um, entire time, it's been at least one gram per pound of body weight, um, and. The like dietary fats, uh, no less than 50 grams this entire time. Then oh. the rest was just carbs up and down. Oh, bro. You got to get your yeah. fats up. Start having some uh, yeah. for your sources of protein. Start getting steak. If your fat was start, that low, yeah, and that's, what you're saying, did you get your nutrients tested like vitamin D, your fat soluble vitamins? No, vitamin D wasn't a uh, part of the blood panel. Wow, bro. really? Uh, and they gave all you, like the lipids and everything were fine. That doesn't matter. They didn't give you. T they gave you testosterone with testing your D without testing your vitamin D. Nope. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, dude, you're. Uh, I would guess because your fat is so low with yeah. some of your symptoms. I would guess. And I'm, I'd say guess because I because I still want to get this tested. By the way, that's where I want you to bump your calories. Yeah, bump fat. it in fat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go get your go get your go get your 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 nutrients tested. Iron, D, uh, magnesium. Um, those are the most important ones right now. I would say zinc. See if you can get those tested. Because if those are low, your testosterone is going to be on the floor as well. You'll yep. have anxiety, right. depression, low recovery, all that stuff from having. I mean, going from low vitamin D to adequate feels like you just took yeah. anabolic steroids. Like yep. it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a huge difference. And just so you know, uh, 50 or less is low for my female clients with fat yeah. and who are doing proper, <laughs> proper amounts of weight training. So that's really fucking low. Okay. Yeah. So for my situation, what would hundred be... over a hundred hit a hundred plus that really? yes, okay. hundred grams plus minimum a day. And so when Sal told you to bump calories, bump it all mm -hmm. from fat. Uh, so if you're a, a chicken and fish guy, become a steak guy, you know? Start at add olive oil to when you're cooking. Revise. Like yep. you need to, you need to bump your fat. Okay, yep. sounds good. Yep, uh, that's something I've been like kind of avoiding in the past because I'm someone that loves volume eating. I like need to eat a lot of food to be able to like keep me full and everything. Go to town of vegetables. So it's primarily a like pile of vegetables and like chicken and stuff you, like that. You know that's why it. though? That's, that's okay. Eat the chicken thighs. Put the olive yeah. oil on the vegetables. Yeah. So th that those are two easy ways right there we can compromise. You're a client of mine. You tell me that. Okay, cool. Eat your big ass bowl of vegetables. Pour olive oil on it. Instead of having chicken breast, have chicken thighs. Add in some steak. Like there, there's a way to compromise. Yeah. We can we can. By the way, when f a, a clue that one of your macro your essential macronutrients is too low <clears> is that you need lots of volume to feel satiated. Mm. Okay. Nutrient deficiencies will do that. In fact, if a nutrient deficiency gets bad enough, no amount of volume will start to feel like it's satisfying you. Yeah. That's one of the beauties yeah. of good fats. Like good fats will, will satiate you. You'll yeah. feel better on it. So let's do that. I'm going to have Doug put you also in the private form because I want to be able to keep an eye on yeah. you as we go through this process. So yep. we're going to send you over MAPS Anabolic. That's the program after your two weeks off that, that, that Sal is recommending. I want yeah. you in the forum. Go get those tested, like Sal was saying, and then and then let us know in the forum, and then we're gonna keep an eye on you. We're gonna fix this shit. Yep, that sounds perfect. Thank you so much. You got it, man. All right, Taylor. Good luck. You got, you got this, man. Yeah. Thank you. See ya. You know, I don't know why I didn't I didn't think to ask his macros when yeah, we were. Oh, I'm glad like, you did. I yeah. figured it. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was a good question because duh. You know, yeah, if, if he's doing all this other stuff, well, he wasn't terrible. like he wasn't like I mean, he's low, right? Like, and obviously, when he was fifteen hundred, that would have been an obvious thing. But then I was like, you know what? Maybe he's like one of those guys who eats all fucking fish and chicken and is like yeah. avoiding fat like crazy, and that'll make you that'll drop testosterone like that. That'll make you feel like that yeah. too. I mm -hmm. want people watching and listening to this too. Like it, it, you, you know, it sounds obvious on the outside. Like, well, duh, like you're overdoing this and that. When you have a dysfunctional relationship with something, it's not. So yeah. it's easy to judge, but I'm pretty sure everybody watching right now does something that is not good for them mm -hmm. that they really, if they thought about it, they know, but they ignore it and they continue doing it anyway. It's no different. 
and uh, fitness can be abused just as well. Listen, so, and that's it, what he's experiencing. Listen, it could also you could it could also not be coming from a place of pure dysfunction, just unaware. You're unaware that you're unaware. Yeah. It just crept up on him. I mean, it, uh, I mean, I, I was we were both kind of prodding for like some psychological thing that he's well, even abusing. being well, weight, weight training is so new to him too. Yeah, and, so. and being that unaware is uh, of uh, it's a dysfunction. Correct, it is. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like he, like it's not like he, when you say that, like sometimes, like the thing that I thought I was searching for that I thought I was going to hear from him was like, oh, uh, trauma. You know, I quit. Yeah, trauma, trauma. I quit. I quit drinking or smoking, and now I went this way. Have to be, no. Yeah, it, it, and then that's what I mean by that. Like yeah. some people will think that dysfunction automatically means you have like this no. crazy trauma or something like that, but you could have this dysfunctional relationship with exercise and food and it kind of just crept up on you and you don't even realize it just because you think you're doing the right thing by cutting these calories and cutting these fats you think you're doing the right thing by pushing the lifting weights because i need to build muscle because i'm too skinny like he's thinking it's out for me it sounds like he's thinking like he's doing the right yeah. things yeah i bet you look that's that's for him to figure out with somebody and you, we're not going to be able to get that yeah, in right. this conversation I mean, right right but it's obvious that the that the relationship he has with, with exercise is not helping him at all no. so that's why i wanted to make that i tell point. you what though you watch you if he bumps his calories from fat he takes those two weeks off. Oh my god! He comes back with just two he's days. He's gonna gain ten pounds well, of muscle on he'll, accident. He, I hope and, he really like pays attention and to how he's, he feels. And he's on TRT right now. Yeah, Look, he'll, get, he'll gain ten pounds of muscle literally on accident. Yeah, he'll sure. be like, what happened? His yeah. body's starving. For I him. hope he follows up with this because he will be he will be a great person to talk to three to six months from now if he listened to the, what we gave him. Our next caller is Cody from Iowa. Cody, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing today? Good. 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 We love to hear that. Uh, just want to start off by saying thank you for having me uh, today. I appreciate you guys choosing my question. Um, kind of feels a little surreal to actually be on the show today. It's awesome. Uh, I want to thank you guys for everything that it is you do in, in this space. Been listening for about a year and a half now, and you guys blow my mind every single day. So I uh, really appreciate everything you guys do for us this right space. Sweet. Right on. What you got for us? So question is, um, I think in the email said, why can't I lean out? So to basically start off, um, I started like actually lifting in, I think it was March or April of 22 last year. Um, I started with anabolic and, um, I wasn't really consistent with it for a while because it was new and I was starting to just get into the fitness space. Um, after anabolic, I went to symmetry, then hit back to anabolic and then went to aesthetic. And then I tried split a few months ago. Um, I started bulking in 22. Um, I think I was around 175 to 185. Um, my fiance, she had me in a 3000 calorie surplus. So I bulked up to about 200 pounds and that was in February. Um, from that point forward, uh, when I hit that 200 uh, calorie mark, we cut me. Um, we cut my calories from 3000 to 26, 26 to 23, and then 23 to 2200. And I've been cutting ever since. And I've seen, I've seen to find myself in this spot where I'm not really moving much. I've seen a six pound loss. Um, just this morning, I weighed in at 189.8 and it's been this fluctuation between 190 to 194 since like, I would put since like May, um, I haven't seen much results and my body fat percentage, we did it the other day. I was around 14 to 15%. Um, I did get smaller in size cause my wedding is coming up in about a month and my suit measurements changed. So it just hasn't been really seemed to work out for me. And I wanted, wanted to know if you guys had any answers. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your upcoming wedding. I appreciate That's that. Awesome. Which, uh, how long have you been consistent with your workouts? Um, for the first two to three months, it was very like lackluster. I was probably going two or three days a week. And then I want to say around June of last year is when I really started being consistent with it. I was going just about every single day for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. You're, you're okay. So, um, by the way, did you said you mentioned your, your, I guess your girlfriend or fiance, is she a trainer? Uh, she is, she is a trainer. She, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Okay. So, 
I, I would say this. Um, I, I would, if I, if you were my client, I would have you focus on getting stronger, uh, more than anything. And I'm going to guess that you're probably overdoing it with your workouts. I'm looking at the workouts that you're following of ours. Um, and you know, some of them are really, really high volume. Uh, some of them are more, more appropriate for most people. And I would probably guess of all of our programs, anabolic, you probably got the best strength gains with maps anabolic. Am I, am I hitting the nail on the head? You'd be uh, right. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. You're overdoing it. You're just overtraining. You're, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm probably not blatantly overtraining. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to, I want to point out too, the fact that you're, you're seeing, uh, you're only four, you said 14, 15% body fat range, which by the way, is a healthy, decent range to be at. I mean, I, you, I know you're motivated to get probably shredded for your wedding or whatever like that, but one, you're in a pretty good place. And if you're eating a sufficient amount of calories, you've only been really consistent for a little less than a year. Uh, some of that too could be, and I, I, we didn't ask about how consistent you are with the diet. Like if you're tr like training is one piece of this, right? Making sure that you're very consistent with your lifting. I mean, how dialed are you with this diet? Like uh, how, uh, how much do you track? How much do you make your own food versus going out? Like how, what's the consistency around that look like? So I actually track every single day. Um, my calories pretty much, I, I either hit them or I like, I'm just a hundred calories below what I'm supposed to be at. Um, I have the luck of a fiance that meal preps every single week. So okay. we have our, per, like our lunches made perfectly for the entire week. And then she also schedules dinners throughout the week. So um, everything's homemade. We don't okay. go out that often. We probably go out like once every one or two months. So I, I'm always hitting at least my body weight and protein. Um, if not more, how's, how's, uh, your strength in the big lifts? Like, what do you, what do you squat? What do you deadlift? What do you, what, tell me your, tell me your lifts. So when I first started, um, the strongest, I guess I could say I got was I was able to do, uh, a two Oh five squat for three, uh, a deadlift, I was able to do about 285 for three. And then my bench was at 140 for three. And then I think it was like a few weeks ago, uh, all those exercises took about a 20 pound drop off. So you're, you're overdoing it. Yeah. That's easy. And you got yeah. plenty of room to get strong. Yeah. Here's That's what right. I'll have. Here's what you should do. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have plenty of room. Adam's right. Because you've only been doing this kind of consistently for a year for the next three to five years. Your primary goal should be to get stronger and eat a healthy diet, okay? But that's going to guide you better than any other goal, including pure aesthetic goals, especially over pure aesthetic goals, okay? So performance, because at some point, you can't just keep getting stronger. So at some point, you need to stop focusing on that. But for the first, like, five years of your workout, especially at your age, uh, it's, it's, it's a great it's, – it's a better – guide than almost anything else you'll, yeah, and you'll actually lean out it's it's weird to think this that if you know sal saying hey go bump your calories go back in more of a bulk focus on getting stronger follow like a maps anabolic protocol and it will be a slow process but you'll actually you should see yourself get stronger and also kind of lean out at the same time yeah and, it, and it, what maybe if you were a client of mine what i'd let you do while we're in this process is interrupt our 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 really strength focus with like one week cuts like like one I like one week I let you cut your calories for that week then I go right back to feeding you and focus on strength and then we'd go like that for a yeah. solid month month and a half and I'd say all right another week we're gonna go low calorie for a week and then and I just do and doing that every time I'd reduce the calories you'd probably lean out a tiny bit every time I bump bust, uh, bump the calories back up you'd feel stronger and get stronger like that kind of that's what it would look like for the first couple years of us training you you've got a lot of room to get a lot stronger and build a lot more muscle, which is only going to help you in the getting lean, getting shredded process. Yeah. Don't fall into this trap, Cody, because this is an easy trap to fall into. Oh man, like that person's able to work out that much and get that results. Why is it too much for me or what? Don't worry about that. It's all about what's going to work best for you. And finding the right amount is the most important thing, not how much you can tolerate. That Who cares about that, right? Unless your goal is just to be able to tolerate a, a, a lot of work. That doesn't matter. So MAPS Anabolic is a great program for you. MAPS Symmetry is a good program for you. MAPS Performance is a good program for you. MAPS Powerlift is a good program for you. And then MAPS Split is a good program. But here's what I want you to do with a lot of these programs, except for, let's say, MAPS Anabolic and probably MAPS Symmetry. With all the other programs that I mentioned, 
cut the volume down by a third. So if you go map split, take the total sets, cut them down by a third. If you, okay, so some of our more high volume program, cut the volume way down and start there. Maps anabolic should be your base. And that's probably where you're going to see uh, your best, most consistent gains. And then as far as cardio and all that stuff is concerned, I mean, if you like doing that stuff, that's walk, great. Walk. Otherwise, just walk. Yeah, walk. Yeah, just go on walks. I yeah, mean, I'm glad you guys brought that up because I work in an office job, if you will. So I'm probably averaging like 5,000 to 7,500 steps a day. So me and my fiance, we've been definitely trying to fit walks in a lot more to definitely raise those steps. Um, I'm not a big cardio person, but she thinks maybe increasing my steps would at least be a little beneficial. Oh yeah. I think that's great advice. And you know, and I do want to commend you for not falling in the trap of just cutting your calories to 1500 calories and running every day, because that would lose weight initially. If we all mm -hmm. of a sudden said, Hey, let's run 1500 calories. Let's run for an hour every single day. Like you would lose weight, but you would just be setting yourself up for like a, a harder time down the road and you'd end up putting all the weight on yeah. and some. So you're not, you're not far with little, little tweaks, like what Sal is suggesting right now. And, and then a lot of it is psychological is, is being patient, you know, building, building muscle and shredding body fat and, or simultaneously trying to do it is a slow process and you're young, man. You're young and you have a ton of potential and you got a lot of great stuff ahead of you. So just be patient and 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 trust the process. At the steps is is a good if you're that sedentary where you're three thousand. It's just gonna be healthy. Yeah, it'll 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 help out. It'll help. That between that and getting and focusing on getting strong, I think you I think you and increasing calories, I actually think that you will see yourself get stronger and slowly lean out at the same time. Okay. Awesome. All right, man. Do you have now you have those pro the programs I mentioned, because it looks like you already ran them. E can you name them off again? I like maps anabolic symmetry. Uh, do you have mass performance? I don't. All right, let me send that over to you. And then let me do this also. Let me send you Maps Prime Pro just because your girlfriend might find that or your fiance might find that uh valuable in what she does as a trainer. I think and, and I think you'll find it valuable as well, but it'll be something you can share. Okay, awesome. You got it, man. Thanks right, for Cody. calling in. All right, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. You got it. Yeah, it was just you know, I like it when they're easy. The answer is yeah. that's classic, right? Classic yeah. overdoing it. Yeah. And he's young. Yeah. He's only 22. Yeah. He's not, and, and he's only been lifting consistently for a year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know yeah. So, and he's not in a bad place. 14, 15% body it's fat. It's so crazy. No. It's, and I, and look, this is, this is, the, this is Instagram world for you. I know. And yeah. this isn't, this isn't a perfect Magical answer. Results quickly. This isn't perfect. But if everybody who started working out for the first three years, just tried to get stronger, if they made that the primary goal, Mm -hmm. most people will be far better off. Just that. I don't care if you want to lose weight, you want to gain weight, you want to build, whatever. So true. If you yeah. just did that, that would guide you so much better than almost anything else just by trying to get stronger. Even if you're 50 plus pounds overweight, yeah. which mm -hmm. seems crazy right. to yeah. say that. Like if you just focused on eating a good amount of calories, maybe even increasing them and constantly focusing on getting strong, how much that will serve you in the long run. Our next caller is Corrine from Winnipeg. Hi, Corrine. How can we help you? Hi there. Um, uh, I love the show. I listen to it all the time. I was wondering if you could give me some advice for someone that has an absent bum. <laughs> <laughs> it's not showing up, huh? It's, it's a, all right. So what's the, so what's the deal? I'm assuming you're talking about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Okay. Unfortunately, it's kind of runs in the family. Yeah. So, so what, do, yeah. what does your workouts look like? And in, in, uh, like, in what, what are you tried? What yeah. are you doing for this? And, and how's your diet? Uh, workout sporadic. I'm a 40 year old mother. And I try to work out, but sometimes I injure myself and that gives me setbacks. My energy is kind of low after workouts. What? I'd say my diet is kind of, you know, could use more protein probably because I'm a pescatarian. So probably could use more protein. Corrine, I got some good news for you. The answer is going to be really easy. Yeah. Yeah. Eat your body weight and protein. You got to eat more calories. And let's get you to lift some weights consistently to build some muscle. Do you think you could, can you get to a gym two days a week or do you need something more convenient? Cause you said you're a mom and I know what, I know what it's like to have kids and how busy that is. So is we two have, go ahead. I, I could totally go to a gym two days a week. We have most of the things I think I need downstairs though. So I really should don't have any excuse. Oh, oh yeah. do you have a squat rack and barbell? We have a barbell. We could get a squat rack. We've been talking about it for years. So yeah. yeah. 
Oh, Kareem, I'm yeah. going to give you MAPS Anabolic. And what you want to do is start tracking your protein intake and, and do this. Uh, how, what's your body weight? I'm like 113, 115. Okay, depending. beautiful. So eat, I would have you eat about 40 grams of protein with breakfast, with lunch, and with dinner. Okay, so figure that out. Prioritize that. Start there. <laughs> I know it sounds like a lot, but that'll give you about 120 grams. If you fall short a little bit, you're still okay. But if it's that. hard to do that in the single meals, there's nothing wrong with going four or five meals, just so you know. Yeah. So like if you're like, oh man, I can only do 20 grams with lunch because yeah, I was just full. eat more meals. You could have another 20 grams, something or throw a shake in there. A protein shake is a real easy way to kind of help that out. And then I'd follow MAPS Anabolic, do the two day a week foundational workouts and um, your butt will grow yeah. for sure doing something like that. Now- is this a connectivity issue at all? Like, do you feel like when you do squats or lunges or anything, like you feel a lot in your quads versus like you don't get a lot of uh, activity in your glutes? Or is this like more just, you know, you haven't really put that kind of work in weight training wise? I think you're right. Yeah, I'm actually injured right now from doing too many squats and jumps and my hips oh. got really sore and then that threw up my lower back. So I just feel like I oh, wow. try to make progress that I could give myself these setbacks. So once my back feels better, I want to, you're right, activate my glutes. What were you doing that you were jumping? Mm -hmm. I tried Apple fitness workouts. Fuck the hit. <laughs> yeah. I went like all in for a few days. And no. then I was <laughs> how long, how, how long you been with us? How long you been listening to the show? Uh, six months. Okay. I oh, good. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get a pass. We're going to come. Yeah. You get a pass. We're going to come save the day. Stop, yeah. stop listening to anybody else. Yeah. Don't follow any other workouts. <laughs> Please. Yeah. I should okay. know better. Yeah. We got you. Yeah. We'll take care yeah. of you. We will not have you do jumping around for yeah. your goals at all. I mean, so I, I am glad you brought that up because here's here's a, a common mistake when so, when we when we give advice like this for maps and a ball for a female that wants to build her butt is the you're going to have the temptation to want to teach or train the, the the routine in like this circuit manner where you, right. you low rest periods, rest. The idea, rest and add weight, yeah. rest and add weight. Your goal is to get strong. You do not care about getting a sweat. You do not care about making it burn more or being out of breath. A good, okay. a good yeah. strength. To, so to build your butt is no different than it is for the guy who says, I want to build my biceps. Like it's a muscle. And so we yeah. got to feed it properly and we got to strength train and get lift heavy at it to build it. Right. Yeah. So that's the goal. And here. Make sure you're deliberate with your range of motion in terms of depth of your squats. So you're nice and slow and you're in your focus is to increase. Yes. And to make sure you have that, uh, uh tension and control of your yeah. muscles. So, so when you, when we send you maps anabolic, I want you to follow the pre phase for about four weeks before you meet, you move into phase one. Okay. And then to kind of add to what Adam said earlier, uh, if you start sweating a lot during your workout, you're moving too fast. Okay, we're not trying to burn. We're not trying to burn calories. We're not trying to. Not, we want to build. So you, 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 if you're sweating, you're burning, you do all that stuff. You're, you're going too fast right now. And later on, your volume will increase and all that stuff. But you're just getting started. You, you the goal is to get stronger. That's it. Who cares about yeah. anything else? Am I getting stronger? Yes, I'm in the right. I'm moving in the right direction. Okay, so. Pre-phase for four weeks, then move into phase one. Do the two-day-a-week foundational workout when you move into phase one. And if you feed yourself properly, you're going to see some gains. You're yeah. going to see your buck run. I want to add to what he just said right there. You, it's very important you understand, too, that in order for this muscle to build and grow, you have to feed it in a, a caloric surplus. We cannot be dieting. Yeah. You got to feed yourself. You got to give extra calories. Otherwise, okay. your 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 body you're going to send the signal by lifting properly, yeah. and then after you send that signal, the body's going to go look for the nutrients to go build the muscle. And if it's not there, you're not going to build it. And it, it's only going to be there if you give the body a surplus of calories. If you're if you're training and you're and you're cutting and you're in a deficit, you're going to feel a burn in your butt, and you're going to exercise and it's you know whatever, but you're not going to feel you're not going to grow the butt, which yeah. is what our goal is. I have two two supplements I think that would probably benefit you. Uh, I would find a good protein powder that you can digest well. You said you're a, a pescatarian. Do you avoid dairy? Ah, uh, no, I, I have it. Does yeah. dairy bother you, or does it does it digest okay? Usually bothers me if I have like I I would never eat ice cream really. Um, uh, what about Paleo Valley's? Uh, yeah. So, uh, do you avoid uh, beef products for any reason, or is it just for health? Uh, I avoid beef usually, but I eat quite a bit of salmon, like. 
meat, okay. salmon. Okay, so times. okay, then I would go with the vegan protein. Organifi makes a good one. I was going to advise collagen, but that comes from cows, so uh, uh, they make a good one. So protein powder is good, and then I would take creatine every day, five grams, five grams of creatine every single day will help you. Just it'll help your health. Uh, okay. Anyway, it's good for you. You'll notice more energy. You'll notice uh, you're probably going to help with your moods and and all that stuff. But it's really good for building muscle. Really, really good for building. So th those two supplements I think will help you alongside okay. everything else we did. And if you do what we said, it's going to work. You're going to build muscle. I promise you. This is not a hard thing to solve right now. Okay. Yeah. I think you said on a previous podcast, you said um, back and butt to work out if you want to look good, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. But well, beca because you're getting started and because this is new, you're going to train everything. That's going to give yeah. you the best results. So MAPS Anabolics is a perfect program for you. Okay. And then after huh. after you run through that, circle back with us, and then we'll guide you from there because we have even more specific stuff for building. Yeah. Continue start laser focusing. Yeah, that's the foundation. After that, is to start there. That's going to really start moving you in the right direction. And then we have even more specific programs when you want to continue to grow the butt. So follow. that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. This sounds. This is exciting. I can do this. Awesome. All right. All right. Thanks for calling in, and thanks for listening to the show. Thanks so much, guys. You got All it. Right, Green. This was, uh, you know, how many times you get clients like this, you know? I don't oh, it's so, e so easy. And you would do like two things and they'd be like, oh my God, what is happening to my body? It's I working. mean, hardest part would be adherence, right? So yeah. like, I mean, the food, I, but probably. we hit the big things, right? Yeah. I could, she looked, she's yeah. very lean, right? You yeah. could tell she's lean. So she probably has no yeah. problem reducing calories and staying low calorie. She's going to have a problem with eating in a surplus. Yep. And you mm -hmm. got to understand, you could do all the best butt exercises in the world. Right. If you don't feed the body in a surplus, it, the muscle's not going to grow. No different than yeah. the dude wants to build a big chest or shoulders or arms. It's yep. the same thing. Yep, yep. So good luck with that. Look, if you like the show, you can find us on Instagram, Mind Pump Media. In fact, we create workouts for our followers every week for less than $5 a month. You get a workout every single week, Mind Pump Media. You can also find all of us on Instagram individually. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.